All right. All right, everybody. Welcome to the service. Everybody, welcome to the service. Neil is here. Paul Braden is here. What's up, everybody? Um, Paul Braden says, We love Sarah. Wishing you all the best. Thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. This is our second, third episode of Cult Rehab. And it's just been such a big hit with uh, with the YouTube, with the algorithm, and uh, with, uh, with the people. And also, I just, I, I feel like it's a, uh, it almost feels like so smart to do just because everyone who comes in is like, has such interesting stories. I really do feel like we have lots to learn from people who have been in calls. We should treat it. It's, it, it is like, cause it, even when we, when I reviewed uh, the next team cult and other cults like that, it is like, they have these like training programs and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, people. It's not easy. That's what makes these guys pop off is they have these insane training programs and the sales and recruitment programs, really, I mean, it, the curriculum on some level is the same as like sales training, kind of, and pyramid scheme MLM training. But then there is like, you know, the time that you go in, it's almost like the karmas are the karmas. You know what I'm saying? It's like karmas are karmas and karmas have been put in. Even if they're like, it is like scammy and like they, they rewrite it. It's basically like I find it's Buddhism and then the guy will just put himself at the top and then they exclude anything that says you shouldn't be striving so much. So it just becomes like, oh, you got to get to, you got to get green sash. <laughs> what are you going to, you're not going to get green sash. How's it going to look in the community? And then you got to, you got to do it. And then you spend 5,000, 10,000, $20,000 later. Right. And that's why I think it's so important that we have an anti-cult call. You know what I'm saying? And that's, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to build here. We're, uh, here at the drip, we want to we want to be a safe space for people who have been through stuff like this. I was very heavily affected by it as a child. Thank God for the Hindus. I really would have gone off, and I've done this on stage and I've told you guys about it. But like when I was fifteen, I really thought I was in love with this girl, and I was going to join her thing. And I think I was just, you know, I know a lot of guys who do it. I know a lot of guys that go to church even just to, you know, to date and stuff. Um, I, I heard a sermon from Kevin Samuels last week. May he rest in peace. Also, we should give a shout out to Kevin Samuels, big guru in the game, passed away a couple of days ago. I did Duke and Dawn show yesterday, live stream for two hours. People were coming in and yelling at us and they were saying, you guys are being disrespectful. We were very even, okay? We were very even with Kevin Samuels yesterday, but he is part of that. It is, it is very culty though, his whole circle and stuff too. And I think it's uh, important that we do call it out. But, uh, you know, let's give it a week. Rest in peace. Um, I'm sorry. You know, it is, I guess, it was a heart attack, too, at like 57. So, I mean, it just shows you it is a little bit the manosphere stresses. There's constantly like, you, it, it is like a success cult a little bit. Um, but uh, Duke and Dawn, I'm just going to tell this quick one and then we'll bring on Sarah. Uh, she's, she's in the waiting room right now. And uh, I know she has some incredible stories for us. But uh, yesterday, Duke and Dawn. He's telling about this men's men's like masculinity training. He does masculinity. He teaches men how to be more dominant in the market, dominant and take the market and destroy your enemies. And uh, he said the guy charges like big channel too. The guy's big, huge channel. Um, he's like the Jerry Seinfeld of the manosphere, really, because he had a he had like a he had like a manosphere in the cars getting coffee. He did the same thing, but with they would have discussions like that, um, like very well shot, whatever. Anyway, the guy's saying he charges 60 bucks. And I was like, that's nice. Maybe it's the loving kindness coach in me. I just want to be forgiving. I was like, that's actually nice. He's got like a million followers and he's charging 60 bucks an hour. He could charge like two, three hundred dollars an hour. I've seen these psychos charge like crazy, right? 60 bucks for an hour. Maybe his teachings are beautiful. And you know what? If it helps the men embody the masculine power of Shiva and then they can go out and be like Shiva, and then the women can be feel free to be Shakti, and they can dance more in the society, in the culture. You know I'm an advocate of that. I'm going dancing tonight. I hope you all are too. We should be dancing with the community. Not drinking necessarily, but you know, dancing. We, I, I support this. 
So I was like, 60 yards an hour? It's not bad. And then Duke Don, he goes, it's not 60 yards an hour. 60 yards a minute. What? 60 yards a minute. That's what he's charging. Unacceptable, obviously. Even then, I'm so kind. I was like, I was like, but maybe his teachings are like nectar from God. What do we know? So I asked him, like, what's the guy's teachings? And he goes, he goes, someone went to his class, 60 hours a minute. Someone went to his class, and the guy, he goes, sit here, read my book. And he just made the guy read his book. It's unacceptable, right? You got to watch these. And this is, I just want to put out a warning to the community. You got to watch these men's success cults. They are, listen, they're teaching you to be dominant, to destroy your enemies and dominate the market. But right now, you're the market. So they're just going to empty you out. 60 bucks a minute, 60 dollars a minute. And they know you're vulnerable because who would pay for that? That's so sad. Um, so be careful for that. But uh, that's why we, you know, that's why we want to do show. We want to do call rehab. We want to talk to people who have been in and out. I do find that they have like a very special wisdom for us. They do kind of like see it more in the culture a lot of times. But uh, even hearing their stories of uh, how they got in and out, I, th- I, I find it fascinating. I think it's, very, it's great for everyone. So um, everybody give it up and make some noise for the, for the hilarious. Oh, not the hilarious. Sorry, I'm a comedian. I'm used to doing this. For the call survivor. With an incredible YouTube channel, uh, Sarah Stephanie Landry, everybody. Sarah, thanks for coming. Hi. Thank you oh for my having. God. Me. Yeah. I just started doing stand up like last week, and I have to bring people cool. up like, oh, the hilarious, whatever. And then I just I love it. Video. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I used to want to be a stand up comedian, so I'll take it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you try it? Never. No, I I did a couple of spiritual talks live in london once and somebody came up to me afterwards and said it was a treat listening to a comedian talk about spirituality so i think some of the jokes hit well but nice. i've never had the guts to full out plan a set and do it so that's really commendable that you do that's cool honestly these te- these stories that you have i mean yeah. here's the thing with stand-up it's like right now stand-up in america is like someone with a really big youtube channel and then you could just yeah. book helium True. And then you're doing stand up like so many people yeah. do. It. But I've thought of of writing a like an hour set based on shit that happened in the cult because yeah. I mean it it's triggering and it's sad and it's hurtful and it it makes a lot of people feel really weak and exposed and exploited. But if we can make fun of the person causing that kind of hurt, it kind of gives us our power back. Like, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's so it's so much more powerful to just like to yeah comedy is a powerful tool for that for sure yeah it, it kind of like takes their power out of the room you know exactly um, and narcissists yeah. like the thing they hate the most is getting made fun of and knowing people are laughing at them so i mean yeah it's a whole other level of exposing these guys well, I was talking about the manosphere like scene, yep. and I was on a, a guy who does that more more than I do. But yeah. that's what the, that's how they build their audience. And and I, I guess guys, because we're like we're dumb. I, I don't know. It's like a dumb guy thing, but we just think like, yeah. oh, you ripped them, so it's true. Like we just yeah. think <laughs> if you did a good rip, that yeah. is correct. And she's obviously wrong. Didn't you hear? She got ripped, and that's and so there's a whole career of like setting up girls to like make fun of them, like rip on them, <laughs> tell them that like you know, you're destroying society or something like that. And yeah. a lot of people are obsessed with it. They get into it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. The but only thing that would hurt them is, yeah, like if you did a joke on it, because nothing yeah. else, if you get outraged and they're like, look, see, got him. They don't care. Yeah, exactly. True. It, it is like a badge of honor for like a Trump guy. It's just like, see, yeah. Yeah. The leftists, they're out of control. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true. And I mean, like Nityananda, the the cult leader who I escaped and I'm blowing the whistle on, he is pretty much like the laughing stock of India. Like any yeah. new, even news channels troll him. Like the the yeah. way we'd have like CNN or um, NBC uh, News. Like they're they're comedians. Republic TV. The Republic TV Nityananda piece is like is is fire. And from what I, I remember, you're in it. Yeah, I'm in a few of them. Like the live date with Arnab Goswami. And I didn't know what I was getting into. I thought it was going to be like a very calm debate because they said like all these news pundits will be there. And it was just people yelling over each other. You did the show? I did, yeah. Did we watch it? I love that guy's show. He's a psycho. I've showed so many of his clips. Yeah, he's he was pretty cool about Nitty though. He was like empowering us to take him down and 
he made a declaration at the end, like, I won't rest until he is brought back to India to face justice. But Arnab, Ar Arnab is like, if he's on your side, he's great. Yeah. yeah. If he's not on your side, like, he'll have people on for these, like, debates. And, and then he'll just start roasting them. Like, like yes. it'll be something between India and China. And if you're on China's side, he's like, okay, Xi Jinping, where are you calling from? <laughs> Beijing? <laughs> Uh -huh. Why do you like dictators so much? Like he just like rips them. Yeah. But then if he's on your side, he's just yeah doubling down well, on whatever you're saying. The day before I was on, they had a man named Janardana Sharma. And he was also in the cult along with his whole family, like his wife, his four kids. And two of his daughters got trafficked to South America when the fraud fled India. And so he brought a court case to bring his daughters back home and has taken his case to the media to try to gain support, like to, to bring these, these girls back and to warn other parents about what happened to them. And the guys who Avnab had on his show were roasting him. They were saying like, who are you to say like your daughters are being abused and exploited when you brought them there? You knew what it was, you brought wow. them to the cult, you gave them to this guru. And so I was pissed. Like I was ready to go on the debate the next day and kind of troll his trolls. Right. And I think it worked out well. Like one of them actually said, there's no such thing as brainwashing. Brainwashing doesn't exist. And that was like his stance. And so I brought up followers of Nityananda, like Anupama Deshpande, who used to be the head of marketing for Microsoft. Um, people from the Silicon Valley, like, well-off well, millionaires who are his devotees. He's in, yeah. eh? The, the ex-CEO of Microsoft. He's a Nityananda guy. He, yeah, Anupama. Yeah, Anupama. She's, she's following him. And so I brought up these people and said, okay, they went from top-level careers in a very lucrative industry to sitting at his feet, calling him Shiva. Oh, so either God. he is a living incarnation of Shiva himself or they're brainwashed. There's no, there's no in between. There's no gray area here. And Did finally, they massage his feet? These Indian Babaji's, yeah. they do the mis yeah. feet massage? No, yeah. it's unacceptable. Like this, this manosphere guy you were talking about who charges like $60 a minute to read the <laughs> book. Nitti would charge people $1,000 to press his feet. You pay him. You pay him to press his feet. Oh my goodness. Like, uh, what a sinner. What a sinner. But also uh, what abundance is in this world, you know? Oh yeah. He's manifesting that flow of wealth. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take him to prison. I I feel he's the next Keith Raniere, and it's just a matter of time before the public recognizes that. Yeah, he's I mean, it's it's got to be right. Like he just paints such a nice face on it. He's silly and stuff. Yeah. Like, I find that everyone has this intense training program. Like, like as rude as it is to say, like yeah. when these cults get big, there's something tight in there. There's some like oh, they're yeah. okay. First of all, they're taking Buddhist meditation techniques, which yeah. fine, but I don't think that's enough because I do that. It's like not hot enough. You know, my yeah. meditations aren't getting packed like that. Yeah. And it's like, there's another thing. Like, what's the stuff right. that gets you hooked in? I think it's a combination of the charisma and the confidence with which they lie to you and say their path is the only path that will take right. you to your highest goal. And so they'll say you can do these meditations in other places, but the group energy we have here with all of these really sincere seekers who have been meditating for years, look at their achievements in the outer world. You can have that too. You can go to other groups, but if you come here, this is the caliber of people you'll be meditating with. Oh, and then God. he'd bring up all the Bollywood stars who were following him. I know like at, at the time That's I got- the resume. The, it's the resume. And it, like Scientology has their celebrity center. At the time I found Nityananda, they were all boasting because the guy who played Kramer on Seinfeld was following him. So they said, yeah, you never know, like Michael Richards might show up to the program you're attending. So it's like- <laughs> That's always... not even a good look anymore. Was this pre- him No, it was, the post. it was post. It was post. Okay, like, Nityananda, you know, this is not a good move. You're not no, getting anyone with that. I feel like it's like, it's like Will Smith going to Sat Guru. Like a celebrity has a big public humiliation and then they go to one of these babas to oh, try did, to like, did, restore. Did Will Smith go to Sat Guru for some yeah. kind of like, bless I me, Babaji, give me I my Shiva. 
<laughs> exactly. I follow Cult News 101 on Instagram. So it it's always showing the latest stories about these gurus. And that was it. Like the week after Thanks. Chris Ross, sat, he was in India with Sat Guru. Wow. Uh, one week he flew to India. That's so funny. Yeah. But he's fired from everything. What do you I do? Go see Babaji. It's, it's time to see Babaji. Yeah. What else? <laughs> time for Sanyas. Time for said yes. I have to I have to seek myself spiritually. Yeah, because yeah. you literally, I mean, you can't work anywhere else. And it is almost like um PR for them. It just yeah. shows like, oh yeah. Will Smith, well, he he went to see the gurus, so he's helped, yeah. you know. Yeah. And fair enough. I mean, you know, we don't have to spend so much time on Will Smith, but no. I feel like he's, you know, I feel like he's hurt in this situation. Like he did a slap, oh, but then he's sorry and like he deserves yeah. our forgiveness, maybe. You know? It was I know it's it's been over talked everywhere already and that that we don't need to get into it but I guess we kind of do because it came up like I I stayed at my blog post that day to watch the Oscars and so we saw it live you would watch the you watch the Oscars it seems like that thing is dead it's like there's nobody watching it yeah it is it is but I like the dresses I like the fashion it's that's fine oh yeah you're in the fashion you're in the fashion business kind of with the jewelry yeah I like to see what what's up in the jewelry that they wear um so yeah, these are your karmas surprising. that's great yeah that is that is it was surprisingly like triggering to some of my cult flashbacks because one of the things i had to do in the nityananda cult was stand on stage and introduce him before every program and so there were times i'd be on stage i'd have to do it, it was all ad lib there was never a script and watching chris rock like just keep his composure and keep yeah. soldiering on even despite getting publicly attacked yeah. reminded me of times when I was on stage talking and behind the screen Nityananda was shouting at me, calling me stupid, telling me nobody's listening to me, telling me that I'm doing a terrible job and I'd have to like keep smiling, pretending oh. everything. That's way me. harder than stand up. You gotta I mean, do stand up, Sarah. You gotta I, get on the stage. I think I will. I think I will. No one will do that to you. No, no, no. I, I think I'd rather get slapped than have somebody who I worship as God tell me I'm a piece of shit while I'm trying to speak to a crowd of a thousand. Like it's, oh, but it, it reminded me of that. Like the, the look on, on Chris's face brought me back to that moment. And then when they panned to show Will in the crowd and he had tears in his eyes as he was shouting, it was like, there's pain here that yeah, yeah, 100%. on both sides. And, and it's interesting, the thing you talk about, like getting triggered, like this is something that I found with a lot of people, even this guy, Kurt Metzger, he mm -hmm. was like this comic who was in Scientology. And so he's in one brainwash. And then now yeah. in the culture, he'll see a brainwash thing yeah. and he'll just be like, ah, 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 and they just like go crazy. He just gets into a fight with everyone. And yeah. He, it's yeah, like yeah. you have a new sense awakened that's like a it's like a higher level bullshit detector where if somebody's trying to scam you or brainwash you or catch you in something say, ah, i know <laughs> okay hold up that stick as as you were talking i went through my old instagram this is something i don't oh, know if yeah. i'm in frame wow you're full of shiva mode Wow, God is great. Look at that. And he Look at that. Forced me, he forced me to carry this. He said, whether you're like taking a, a bath or walking to another campus, like never have this out of your hand. I had to carry that thing 24-7 for months. Wow. I just got this for fun. I know. I, I saw that and I was like, do you know? Do you know that that was like part of my cult program? Oh, listen, I sorry to hear that, but that's, that's it. Okay. That is a pretty... It's a pretty tight stick, though. It's like he yeah. has the like, Rubidox hanging to the front. Yeah, Man, it is. his fashion game, like, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's like you're in, yeah. you're still in fashion, yeah. but there is something yeah. about his fashion, like the chairs. I the, know, like they're he's swag, he's swaggy, as we say. Yeah, they're fancy, and that stick, like, I threw it in a dumpster in Toronto when okay. I woke up from all the cult programming. Yeah. And the next day I went back to get it thinking I should take it to a metalsmith to melt it down. I could at least use the silver, but it yeah. was gone. So I like yeah. to imagine like a homeless dude in Toronto, like marching around with that solid silver lion yeah. stick. Like, that would be very funny, but I would love to see you just walk by a thrift store and it's on sale for $10,000. Yeah. You're like, hey, hey, it's worth nothing. <laughs> it's worth nothing. No. You can it's just worth order them from it. India. Yeah, like exactly. this stick, who it is uh, haunted by the ghost of whatever. Yeah, they're selling it for oh, big yeah. money. Yeah, no, yeah. that is uh, 
it, so so that's interesting the, that's kind of what i was thinking about these like mind games and like little it's it's like uh like with ranieri he had everyone in it in like a five-year-long text game like yeah. These guys are above you, and then you text them, and then do this, and then they're going to tell you. And then the prize at the end is they have to have sex with them or something like that. That and was that, like the last one. I don't know if you saw that documentary. I did. I've seen The Vow and Seduced, and I've, I've read Sarah Edmondson's book, Scarred, and Tony Natale's book, The Program. Like, I, I got full fangirl on the Nexium cult. on Not the oh. cult, but on the, on the whistleblowers and how they brought it down, because I feel like all the uncanny similarities between Keith Raniere and Nithyananda. Yeah. It's like they've already established the playbook of what we as survivors of this cult need to do because it's it's so similar from the pedophilia and collecting collateral on the people he targets to the megalomania. Like it it's like Nithy is like a Hindu washed version of Keith Raniere. Right, right, right. And the thing with Hinduism is like open source. So you can just yeah. use it and anyone's allowed to start a cult in India. My, my parents tried to send me to so many when I was a kid. That's crazy. And yeah, there was one. So we had this guy and he's Brahmachari. I don't trust any Brahmachari. No. I don't I feel like any Brahmachari, any celibate organization yeah. is basically like you are just putting you're basically making a recreation center for pedophiles because that's, that's where they can go now. Yeah. You're, you're attracting them in. So, like, who's going to go? Like, it's not a bunch of people saying, yeah, like, I actually want to have sex, but no, I will resist, I will have in, in, maintain it and be this. It's like, you're crazy. I don't even know why the Buddhists do it. That's bullshit. Yeah, I think it is It is a waste. And um, it is like a weird, it, it always ends up being an abusive uh, organization. Yeah. 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 But, I uh, mean, himself is a pedophile. And I, I feel like the... The narcissists who are sexual predators, they create this so-called brahmachari system so that everyone else is starved of sexual attention so that when they demand somebody give it to, to them, that person has no, like, there's no competition. And the, yeah. the thing with Nitti is he wasn't just a pedophile going after the kids or a womanizer going after the brahmacharinis. He went after everybody men women kids whoever he was attracted to he would target so oh he's like on another level yeah they are like yeah. um their brains are this is like the really sad thing about the scammers yeah. and cult leaders is yeah. there's actually nothing in there so we yeah. almost want to like break them and make them suffer and they'll just be like okay like, again, like there's nothing there no kooky. so yeah. i used to do the show with this guy steven uh coffeezilla and he calls out all these scams and it's like you see him go through these cycles. It's almost like he's going through trauma. Like he goes through these cycles like, I got this guy. I got the numbers. I got the facts. I got the this. I got the this. Posts it, whatever. And then that guy comes back and he's like, no wonder he said that. He's a racist and he, uh, he has a history of sexual abuse. And that's it. Well, that's what they said about me. Crazy. That's what the cult said about me. They accused me of racist people. Two men and one woman. Um, they accused God. me of being a CIA assassin hired to kill him. And they had Yes, I know that one story how i tried to poison him with a barb chocolate wow uh, and they called me a racist they said i'm i'm anti i'm racist against all indian people and see myself as a white savior to the hindus oh and, got you on that oh and they call <laughs> it -O, as if i'm like some hillbilly american who calls it like it doesn't have they, a spell. yeah meanwhile you are still hindu you are still in the oh. are you still yeah you're still I hindu still, i still yeah I still, I, mean, I consider myself, I don't follow all the dogmas of Hinduism, but I still yeah. study Sanskrit. I still chant mantras. I still consider Kali my Ishtadeva, Ishtadevata. So I still yeah, keep I mean, murtis in my place. Yeah. I was born Hindu. I gravitate more towards Buddhism because I feel like yeah. Buddhism just took the good stuff in Hinduism and said, we're just going to do this. It's like everyone, yeah. every religion has this like loving kindness department. Right. Uh, what they call loving kindness or like Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta, yeah. the, you know, like that's the only good thing. Yeah. And I do feel like a lot of Hinduism, there is a lot of like propaganda stuff, but he, that, yeah. that's why I kind of got into Buddhism more, but yeah, yeah no, that's great. If listen, yeah. if you need, uh, if you're, if you want to get on the uh, Patel marriage market, they're always looking for <laughs> spiritually minded girls. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, no, no, thank they you. Make some calls. <laughs> and they... <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. No. Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, yeah. that's so funny. Yeah. It, what it, kind of, yeah, good. Oh, nothing. Just it, it's funny that um, people who look for a spiritually minded partner are often trying to find somebody else to 
call into like their cult of one. I don't know if you've seen this, like the bad vegan documentary or. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The one about Marilyn Manson. It, it's kind of like spiritually minded people are so much more open to believing and trusting what other people. Yeah. That I'm wary of people who deliberately look for somebody open minded now. It's weird. It's weird. I it's know. suspicious. No, that. this is this this is this right here. This podcast is a place that people like that can trust. I'll never take advantage oh, of them. But out yeah. there, yeah, no, that's why I like. But it is. I will make fun of it all. Like, I mean, I do yeah. think it's silly. But the idea that I could ever charge real money, like sixty dollars an hour, that's wacky. Yeah, you can't. You're, you know, it's like such an obvious scam. But like, people are. Yeah, that is a sad thing that we don't talk about with it. Where it's like, there is a need in the market, right? Like, what? do we need to do do we need to have more dancing events i feel like i should throw more dance events yeah dance dancing is good i feel like because it seems like the cults have that you know what i mean like are you yeah. going to banger events like you're talking about at the oscars you're like triggered right so it's like because you're yeah. seeing the ceremony he's making yeah. you do these ceremonies so what's these yeah. talk, talk shows you're doing you're doing like a talk show and he's yelling yeah. at you in the back but you got it. What's the show? It's like a year, year. You did the annual Nityananda celebration of something. Daily, daily. I, daily. I had to do three live shows a day. Uh, one hour every morning, I had to do a call-in show called Living Advaita, where people would call in with their spiritual questions and problems. Oh, man, I'm going to do that here. Solutions out of his book, of course. Wow. And I had to do that one hour every morning, one hour every night. And then before his daily satsang, I had to go on stage to introduce him. And the, the crazy thing about it was I'd be told, okay, Swamiji is coming at 7.15. So at 7 o'clock, you be on the stage ready, give his introduction, give a recap of yesterday's discourse. And 7.15, wrap it up, chant the Satguru Vandanam. He'll come, he'll give the talk. At like 7.14, I'd start wrapping it up. And my buddy yeah. in the tech pit, which was like under the stage, would flash a sign that says he's late. Keep talking for another 15 minutes. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> Have other comics. See, this is like, you know, it's like you wanted to be a comic, right? Yeah. The God makes you do what you wanted to do. It's like you <laughs> yeah. go there. You got to like come up with rips. Like, you got to do half yeah. an hour? Well, and it was I like 15 minutes. Half an hour? If I was fucking lucky. Can I swear? I should have asked. Yeah. This. No, go okay. for it. I don't care. Half an hour if I was lucky. There was one day this went on for three hours. It was Navaratri, like day one of Navaratri in 2018. And I was told, you know, he's at the temple doing Abhishekam. So you go on stage, give the introduction, introduce the history of Navaratri. And I said, well, okay, what is the history of Navaratri? I know it's like the nine days and nine nights of celebrating Devi, but what, what should I say specifically? And yeah. I was told, I don't know, you figure it out. But this is when I'm already on stage, dressed up, ready to talk two minutes before we air. They would yeah. give me my theme for the day. And I said, well, how long am I going to talk? And they said, well, he's going to finish up the Abhishekam. Then he'll he'll come. We'll tell you when to stop. And they just never did. And I kept talking and talking and talking. Oh, my God. And finally, three hours later, somebody shows a sign in the tech pit that says he's on the stage. They're just finishing his hair and makeup because he'd have a team of people elaborately style his fake dreadlocks and stuff. <laughs> the guy, he does the fashion. He does do yeah. the fashion, that guy. I mean, I have to grudgingly admit I like <laughs> I like the jewelry. I like the style. I like. I saw one turban where he has just like your cane, where there's a Rudra chain yeah. in the front. He had a turban where he had a little yeah. charm hanging in the front. I was like, this guy, this guy's so cute. Like, what's this yeah. char? It's so silly. It's like a. Bra He's always so probably thinking like it'll brainwash you or something. Yeah, it's silly, but it it the, a friend of mine, my friend Stephen, found a picture of Jafar from Aladdin with an okay. identical looking turban holding oh, a sick. stick. And and did like a side by side of him with Nitty, and it almost looked like Nitty did it on purpose, where he like dressed up deliberately to look like the villain. It's crazy. He's look, like, you know, you I wouldn't put it past him. He knows his fashion. He knows his style. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a style guide. And they're like, okay, yeah. what are, what's our look gonna be? Like, what's twenty twenty two gonna be? I want to go Jafar. We did Jafar in two thousand fifteen. <laughs> we want to go something I'm hot right now. So I'm trying to brainwash all of them. With my <laughs> yeah. No, his style person is Ranjita. And he oh, makes okay. everyone call her Akka as if she's like the big sister of his whole sangha. 
And she's like his secret wife, but she's also like his Ghislaine Maxwell who trains all the other people to treat him the way he wants to be treated, which is like a code word for be his sexual slave. And she's the one who plans his outfits, his turbans, his hairstyles, his makeup, his everything. And she's got a small team of people who they call the SM team, which stands for Sacha Lamurti, which is as narcissistic as it gets. That means like the moving deity is what they call him. Sacha Lamurti. They say he's like, Lamurti. Is, yeah. How does he set up these names? Like, I feel like with Osho, he had everyone calling him Bhagwan. They're like, right. there's all these white people being like, I, I couldn't leave. The Bhagwan needed me. And they're like, it means yeah. God, you idiot. Well, I mean, so I like, those white people <laughs> using <laughs> different terms, but... They he, actually mean like we're all Bhagwan, like God's inside of us. Yeah. And I am Bhagwan and you're Bhagwan. But I guess people just took it like that. I, I always thought Osho probably just had planted a guy and he's like, oh, 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 you're Bhagwan, you're Bhagwan. And then he's like, okay, yeah. well, call me Bhagwan then. Like, did, yeah. did this guy even have like a thing like that? Like where he's like, because yeah. how do you just give yourself a nickname? Like that's kind of psycho, right? So I'll, I'll give an example. I'll give like a, a long example. Okay. There was a day when he saw a post on Instagram of the Dalai Lama. And it said like HH Dalai Lama. And he started asking his inner circle, what does the HH stand for? And people said his holiness. So the next day he had his team announced from now on, he will be called HDH, which stands for his divine holiness. Yes, because this guy. One step up from the Dalai Lama. Of course. Of course. And of then course. that's turned into like if you look at him now on twitter or instagram he's got like a bunch <laughs> of initials it's like hdh jdg Sri like, like, Bhagwan, Juru maha maha ishwar Bhagwan, yeah. Sri dev yeah. uh chandramurti yeah. this and that yeah there's yeah. all kinds of them ananda darsha he has to have ananda in his name because yeah, if you're smiley has- i feel like the gurus give you ananda yep and then you know, all of the names he gave us, like the, the name he gave me was Swarupa Priya. But nobody could just call me Swarupa Priya. They had to call me Nitya Swarupa Priyananda. So wow. my name start with his and end with his. And that was for everybody in his cult. So we had to call each other, not just the name he gave. So it's like multi-syllabic tongue twisters of names. It's like he's doing bits. He's like joking or something. <laughs> yeah. Like he's I mean, like, let's see if they'll buy this. Tell them to put their the name in my like, name. Yeah. 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 What's that? But I cut you off. His bits, like, E does not equal MC square. That Cowboy is Cowboy will speak Tamil. Um, yeah. He, he, he has all bits. kinds of bits. He does. You know what? I, I you know, and, and it, really, it's like the comedian should be doing stuff like this. It's just like, yeah. it's, it's so funny. But he basically, like, he's a perfect YouTube writer. He must have gotten big on YouTube because... It is he a did. click. He's a clickbait master, and yeah. he's just like, Shri Mahadev Ishwar comes to Earth and solves all of life. Like it's just always. It's going to be like just the most grandiose title, and you're yeah. like, well, let's let's yeah. see what he did though. Let's see if he pulled it off or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, he does have now. Osho, I think, has incredible teachings. Yeah. Even though he is technically a cult leader, we do have I to. Agree. Like, yeah. Yeah. Technically, he did. I don't know all the stuff that you're talking about that that Nitya Nun's doing. I didn't see it with Osho. But you poison the town, and that's it. Exactly. You know. Exactly. It's and even seemed, the people. Yep. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. No, good, good. Just the the people who say, "Well, Sheila did that. Osho didn't do that. Sheila did that. Well, he appointed her to be the head of that community, and he would know her character. He would know yeah. the level she'll take things to. And Nitti is like that too. He's he's like the Osho, and Ranjita is like the Sheila. Or he's right, like the right. community and she's like the Allison Mac. Like she he's got his cult formula down. It's a it is a solid cult formula. Like you need someone who can execute and just crack the yeah. whip. And yeah. I remember her line. Well, one of my favorite lines is she just go, she says, tough titties. So that's yeah. a good one. But then I also like when she's talking about how like the be- like the, my favorite scene in that series, second second episode, like 10, 20 minutes in, it's like this row, it's like inspirational. They're just like Build, we're building the ashram. Everyone's like, we're like, hi, Bhagwan. I love working. And they're just like, yeah. oh, working for the ashram. They're built. And, and the lawyer's like, we were building houses. We were making an economy. We had a bank. We had this. It's like, why did they attack us? I don't know. Like, whatever. Yeah. But in the middle of it, Sheila's like, no more meditation. Meditation on the side. Yeah. Work. 
who is working like it just yeah she just cracked the whip so you want to hear something crazy tell me nitty made all of his disciples watch that entire <laughs> series, wild wild country and his context was if osho got 99 rolls royce cars you should be able to get me a thousand if he built an entire town you should build me a city then that became a country and that's wow. what Kailasha to be. And he basically shamed his disciples by using Osho's disciples as an example of how big they could have made it, but didn't. And but it's not too late, they can still do this. So whereas the rest of the world sees wild, wild country as like a train crash and something to avoid, he used yeah. wild, wild country as a game plan, we should do this. And he set a few of his disciples to the task of finding a small town in the US or Canada, he oh said, I will find a small town in US or Canada and buy it. And then we're going to create our own Rajnishpuram. Oh, he said Rajnishpuram. He, he, so he pays, yeah. he pays homage to the king. Oh, yeah. Because he's dead now. He's dead now. When, so it's like, whatever. When he started his Adinam in India, when he started the Bidhidi Ashram, he wore an Osho Mala everywhere all the time. He, wow. he a photo of Osho above his bed. I've seen it with my own two eyes. He, he, he created his cult with Osho's teachings. And I think that's what drew so many people in because right. like you said, they're good. They're compelling. They, they have a ring of truth to them. He used Osho's yeah. teachings. He used Hubbard's pyramid scheme strategy. Yeah. He, he made his first crew of devotees all read Dianetics and said this man was a living Rishi. L. Ron Hubbard was one oh of the God. Rishi Munis who came back. He created the Upanishads in the past lifetime. This lifetime he created Scientology. So he he has paid homage to the other cult leaders who came before yes. him. Yes, he says and yes. But I guess, and what was that? He's- Oh, ju just, just a humble seeker who followed their formula and realized he's an avatar. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it's kind of like I heard this Alan Watts speech where he talks about like someone's asking like, why is there evil in the world? Or like, if we're all this love energy and we're just playing a game, this Leela or whatever, and yeah. they're saying like, why is there evil people in the world? And he was saying that like, if you were in a game and it was like you knew the good guy was gonna win, it would suck. And then yeah. if it was 50-50, it would be like pretty boring. But if it's like 80, 90 percent chance the bad guy's gonna win, then it's fun. Yeah. So basically, this Leela of life, it just makes these psychos. And yeah. they're they're wild, and they know how to like like just play with us and manipulate us. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. And it's here's the thing: like, I would I would have fun with it if it was just a wild wild country scenario where where he's kind of running amok and disturbing right. the neighbors, or if it was like Scientology just ripping people off, scamming them for their money. But the fact that he's beating children and grooming kids to be his sexual servants from very young ages, some as young as seven. Um, he has molested kids, um, collected pornographic pictures from children in his gurukul. It's like he's he's an evil predator to a, to a sick degree where some of the stuff he does is funny. Like some of the discourses he gives are so obviously like crazy rants could be ridiculed and laughed at but some of the stuff he's doing it's just bad it's it's like yeah. you can't laugh anymore because families are being destroyed and kids are being abused and yeah like long-term psychological pain he's inflicting i don't know how any of these kids can go on to leave a normal life when they get out yeah so, no it is it is a lot of trauma but then honestly like it does seem like this makes people like super strong too so in a way yeah like people come out of it and then they're just like, oh, okay. Like, oh, there's a traffic jam. Like, okay, whatever. You know, I True. had yeah. thing, you know, so they almost yeah. have like, and also it does seem like the training because they are, so what makes Osho so tight. And to this day, I like, I still listen to Osho. Mm -hmm. All of his discourses are just free on uh thing and on, uh, on audible. They're just free. It's like, it's called Osho something, uh, never born, never died. And they're all, you could buy the same book. But then yeah. you go to the Audible, the, the podcast section, they're all there for free and they're incredible. But what he does is, first of all, like he'll go 35 hours on one discourse. Like he'll just do it for five, 10 days straight and it'll be like a Sufi discourse, let's say. Mm -hmm. So 
I know the formula now. I can do yeah. it's not even that hard. He basically what he does is first of all, you gotta talk slow. Like this is why you know I'm not a cult leader. Yeah. He's like, these yeah. guys talk, like they even use time so strategically. Like he pauses. I listen to him at 1.7 speed. And it's like normal. I just feel like I'm hearing a normal person talking. He's yeah, it, it's super slow. He uses all the best old stuff though. He has Zen teachings, all that stuff. I don't know. So it does seem like what these cults do though is that they have like uh, the life efficiency systems and you will have a uh, higher efficiency through God unity and join the cult. So there's that program. And then there's like maybe a fun side to it. True. Like what, yeah. What kind of, um, what kind of like stuff were you doing where you're like, okay, I got to do this next year. Cause it does seem weird, like they got to hook you in with these like long-term plans now. Like what's the, yeah. what's the kind of like, like pulling you in process. So the similarly to Osho, he, his discourses were all free on YouTube. And a lot of them were just regurgitated Osho. Like, wow. not just the teachings, but even the life stories. Like, Nityananda told a story about how when he was wandering India, he spent a week with the Ball Mystics, and they never usually let outsiders in, but they're so free-spirited, and that if he hadn't started an organization, he would have given up the world and joined the Balls. And it was later I found... That's Osho's story. That's something Come he on. did. It's the verbatim. Like, look it up. It's he. He not only took <laughs> Osho, not only took Osho's teachings. Did he but cry? He, and then I said, he did. He did. I, he did. I haven't started this organization. What to do? I'm just a humble village boy. I didn't know what I was wow. getting into. That's that's how he would present it. But that's no, so hey, I should do that. He talks to you in with a free discourse. And invites you to do a free meditation. Okay. Yeah. The original formula was called Nitya Dhyan. And it started with chaotic breathing, then intense. Nitya Dhyan. What a group. This guy you know is what it, was? it was Osho's dynamic meditation repackaged right. as Nitya Dhyan. So he took his meditation. And obviously, if you do this, like the chaotic breathing, the, the loud humming, the chanting, Right. You will feel good after you've yeah. done it because it's a formula. And then he'll say, if this made you feel good, come to the weekend program. It's called Kalpataru, the, the wish fulfilling tree. You'll be able to manifest your reality through the law God of attraction. God he gets great. people to go to that weekend program. That's $200. And they'll tell you that's reasonable, right? You'd spend this money on a self-development seminar. So we've got a full system. Better. Okay. Yeah. You it's go sales to that. Funnel. And then from there, sales funnel, the two day program that costs you $200 is a high pressure sales pitch to go to the $10,000 inner awakening program in India. A classic. And because it's the Kalpataru program to manifest whatever you want, if anybody says, I can't afford that, they say, well, good thing you're at a place where you manifest. So you manifest. Hey, God, make it, brother. Say, God, make it. And give me your yeah. credit card. Yeah, they take it. They'll take exactly. your last Give your credit card. They would promise people, if you pay in full now, four times that amount will manifest in your bank account after the program. Woo! So God, people pay. People pay. And then <laughs> that keeps you going. Then at the, at yeah, the $10,000 inner awakening, they tell you this December for like $21,000, you can come for a full month. And it's the big year-end program called Maha Sadashivoham. So you're not only becoming Shiva, you're becoming Maha Sadashiva, like the greatest infinite ancient wow. Shiva. And yeah, and he'll always, every program is a sales pitch for the next program. Right. The people who go to the $21,000 program, it's a sales pitch for them to become Sarvagnapita Yajamans, so owners of the seat of truth on planet Earth. And that yep. only costs 150000 USD. Once they become Sarvagnapita owners, it's now you want to become a Karta owner where you wow. have a golden statue of yourself installed in the Shiva temple he's building. That's a million dollars US. Okay. So he's, he's creating a whole hierarchy here. Yes, a whole hierarchy. Whoever has paid the most gets the most respect in his organization. And so um, like the Nexium people earn their sashes. Uh, people in his cult will earn... Sarvagnipiti Yajman, they're they're earning statues of themselves in his temple that still hasn't been built, that he's collected millions of dollars of donations for. Yeah, so. that's classic. That's a classic movie. They're just always fundraising, and then they never build a thing. Yeah, 
they're always fundraising. And I think in his case, the money is all going towards the lawyers he's paying to keep him hidden somewhere in the Caribbean or South America. It's going towards fighting Arti Rao, who was his first rape victim, who took out a case against him. Wow. Um, all, all the manpower, like all the people who follow him are wasting their time trying to criticize me online because they think that'll make me go away. Yeah, so it, yeah. He wastes no, you're, you're, time, money, everything. Yeah, the whole thing sounds like um, it is like this silly game that uh, you can get involved in. And then but like they're like they're so confident and they're so strong and certain in what they're doing that in the end, like thousands of people are just going to run around and do these games. It, 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 yeah. you, you're seeing a pattern with it. Like there's, a, it, I guess it just takes like the right kind of psycho to be like, yeah. I can get into this because yes. you know, it sounds exactly like the Trump university. I went to Trump university and uh, it's exactly the same training. The first time, the first they're telling us like $2,000 for the, for the weekend, that's yeah. a two for one. Yeah. You're going to, everything you need to know, you'll be a millionaire in real estate, six months. That's everything <laughs> you need to know. Don't worry about it sign up in the back we're only taking the most serious people when the guy said sign up in the back two people ran back they were like only for five minutes we're going to take sign-ins of for course this five minutes yeah. and if you're late we don't take it two people yeah. run back my all of us are just like rolling our eyes my dad's yeah. like you gotta do it you gotta <laughs> do it <laughs> you never yeah. lose knowledge so i go yeah. so he so he actually gets my mom like they just pay for it and i go but i was like 20 20 years old and i go mm -hmm. and like yeah the first thing they told us was like this class, it's nothing. You got to pay for 40000 do the full class, full yeah. course, and then you'll know real estate kind of thing. Yeah. Right. He probably leave you after that. Nityananda seems like, yeah, he's just, he'll just take more and more and more money. Yes. Like, I, I know someone who he scammed into joining Carta, which is the million dollar donation. Wow. And then the next step is he tells them, now, you know what? I'm ready to offer you the full immersion as me. Now you just have to sell your house, donate what you earn for it from to me, and then move to live full time in the ashram. I'll take care of you for the rest of your life. So first, one million dollars, <clears throat> one million dollars plus all their real estate that they own, and then their prize that's for giving him all of that is to become his slave. So that's his goal. He won't stop until he bleeds a person dry. It, it's like a lot of MLMs. I see somebody in the chat said that, but yeah, yeah. An MLM wants you to work like a slave so that going up the chain, they earn money off of your work or the money that you pay to buy the product into that MLM. In the case of this cult, he doesn't just want your free labor and all the money that you pay. He also wants the person to worship him. Yeah. So it's a it's a lot more to it. Like with a with well, an MLM, you lose a bunch of money to a Ponzi scheme, but with a cult, you lose everything. You lose your, your life. Soul. It's your soul. He wants it's your spirit. Crazy. He would and even tell us if you die, it's just a department transfer. I'll just have you working for me in a disembodied capacity. Wow. So he he wants people forever. He takes he's afterlife. Like, he's he's yes. getting you on afterlife, this guy. Yes. Wow. That's yeah. That it's is like, wild. But yeah. yeah. Good. Like the Scientology billion year contracts. When we took Sanyas, we <laughs> had to sign away that for the next thousand lifetimes we will be right. his employees. Well, actually, this uh article just came out uh, on the I think on the 15th, we have Natalie Grand coming back, and she's an ex uh, Jehovah's Witness. And she's doing some activism work too. Uh, she wrote this great book too called Cult Girls. Um, <clears throat> I'll link to it in the description. But she was she sent me an article where yeah they were they, I think it was Scientology and they were having like just eight year olds signing like thousand year contracts and then they were working from eight until like tw like maybe twenty and then like oh I'm not it doesn't make sense but they are just born into it so they get brainwashed in. And that's what happens to the kids who are put into Niti's Gurukul. From, yeah. from age seven, he'll accept kids into his residential school. They have oh. to take the Brahmachari Diksha. So they, they're wearing orange from head to toe. Their curriculum at school is how to scam people. So he puts them on stage to read people's Akashic records. And wow. no matter what problem somebody brings up to them, the solution is either take sannyas, or become a Sarvagni Piti Yajaman. So either move here full time as a as a live-in servant, or if you have money, give the money. 
Wow. There's no in between. It's either your life or your money. And, and it's just a cute little five-year-old. It's like we're kids. These are <laughs> seven to eighteen year olds, and they're told that wow. this is the greatest blessing they can give to a human being because they're giving that person a connection to Swamiji. And yeah. their other curriculum, their teacher will tell them the highest aspiration in life, like the greatest blessing you can hope for, is to join the SM team and serve the Satchalamurti. And the SM team, they, they wash his bedding, they serve his meals, they massage his feet, and they perform sexual favors to him. So wow. it is a training camp to raise kids into a life of scamming people for his cult to earn money. There's so many. Yeah, they're so and cute when these kids, they start them off early. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Look at they how look, adorable this kid is. They look cute, but like, yeah, yeah watch out no, that's for the how they get you. manipulating them. The little side glance he gives to whatever grown-up has made him do this. Yeah, I know. That's so, yeah, exactly. You can tell. It's so weird. It is it is adorable, though, and very manipulative. Like, seniors, yeah. they can't say no to a baby. No. They'll do it. No. Yeah. And when you're told, these kids are yoga purushas. So in a previous lifetime, they have realized enlightenment through a very heavy path of yoga. So you should look up to them. Don't think of them as kids. They are your seniors. And wow. so you have, I would see a parent touching their kid's feet in that regularly every day. Parents would touch the feet. In of their India? Kids. Yes, in India. Indian families, like contrary to what a lot of like trolls will say mm -hmm. online, like he was a guru who drew in a lot of Westerners. I'd say like 5% of the people in his audience were white. The rest were Indian. Mm -hmm. So... The, the Westerners were definitely the minority there. The majority of the people were Hindu born Indians. Well, every time I see the white, like there's like not a lot of white people and they're always in charge. Like I've seen a bunch of the clips of his training and it's always it's like a white girl at the front, like, all right, now you climb the rope and you do Oh this. yeah, the, the yoga <laughs> teachers. Yeah, the yoga team was mostly Western. Like, yeah, yeah, they're teaching. That, and then there's a bunch big, of girls. Blonde haired hockey player guy and his ex-wife would lead like the the rope yoga and the pool yoga, but the actual, they were just that we were the public face. Like right. I, I was the one on stage. They were the ones teaching the yoga. But behind stage time, it, stage time, Sarah, he, this guy's giving you stage time. He yeah. is, that was your stand up. That's when you started stand up training. That was it. That was it. <laughs> Only I couldn't crack a joke. It had to be very serious. It had to be, I feel, is he not yelling at you behind the curtain? Like, come on, man, it sucks. Get yeah. it hot. Like, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> And no, he didn't. He didn't. He would yell behind the stage, if they're not in love with me, you're not being sincere enough. There should be tears in their eyes when the curtain opens and they see me. Why are you not creating more devotion in them? Why have they not all paid for the December program yet? You obviously don't believe it's worth the money or they would have all paid. Man, they're, they're it's like you're the opener. You're like the opening act. Oh, he's supposed to be the headliner and make all that. Yeah. You're, he's well, giving you the chance. The other thing. This, this is like this would crush your soul as a stand-up comedian. Imagine the headliner is is supposed to be there at a specific time, but he's backstage doing shit with Ranjita. So you're told, okay, you have to you have to keep talking. The curtain closes. It's you finished your set but he's not coming. So when it opens, it's going to be you again. And everyone in the crowd goes, oh, like that would happen. That would happen. <laughs> and he's in the back. Is it's he hooking up with Ranjita in the back? That's such a oh, power. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So he's just back there. He's just back there he's having sex. Yes. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him go. Let her... Yeah, yeah, tell, yeah. Sarah will do 20 minutes. Let her do 20 tell minutes. Tell her to keep talking. Tell, tell, tell her to complete them that I'm not coming today and say it's their space. So I'd have to say, today we are blessed to raise our space, to prepare ourselves to see him tomorrow. And he's decided and go, that the revealed yesterday need to sink in more deeply. So instead of the live satsang, we're going to rewatch the video of yesterday's discourse. And people would be like, eye roll, disappointed. Yeah. And yet the worst thing is they thought I was the one making those decisions. They would think yeah. like, okay, Swarupa Priya decided he's not coming today because she doesn't think we're ready to see him. But no, no, like, it's your fault. It was he's like he's like yeah, this boy you didn't get you didn't get the crowd hot enough. You yeah, yeah. Yo, yep. I don't feel like going now. Yeah, she wanted to keep talking, so I let her. Oh no, he told people that. 
Yes, That's he did. So he did. Yeah, they thought I was like a stage hog, but no, that was his instruction. And he he would make a lady named Maha Yoga do it with manifesting power. So like, you know that guy you were talking about when you did the intro who charges like $60 a minute and makes people right. read his book? So people <laughs> pay $21,000 to go to one of these like 21-day programs with Nitti. And then what they're told to do is tie a blindfold and sit there and try to read off of a piece of paper. What's the rudest thing he ever said to me? Neil is asking. He called me a third rate bloody dog once because I only took I, I only caused 60 people for a December program. So you sold 60? And what's a December program? 21,000 or is that the 250? At that time it was 16,000. 16, you sold 60. I got, I, well, I technically I got 80, but I lowballed it and said I got 60 in case the other 20 were no shows because sometimes that would happen. So, you see, I, people, these are the sales skills that you learn on the inside well, of these calls. That is some powerful sales. My, Natalie Grant, too, she's in sales. Yeah. My goal that he gave me was 10,000. And he said, because I had 50,000 YouTube subscribers, I only needed one out of five. Just one out of five people needs to say yes and come. So because I only got 80, not 10,000, he called me a third rate bloody dog. He said I destroyed his mission. He said the reason nobody is following him the way they should, that he's the only one on planet Earth who can give enlightenment to human beings. And that right. he and trusted he's like, you, you screwed it up. You I, I screwed it up. I single-handedly ruined his mission because I only got 80 people to register for Maha Sadashi Boham. So that wow. was the real thing. Yeah. Most people would call that a good sale. Most people would give you a sales award on that. Most people you would be like, this is right? a, you're, they'd be like, you're the, you're the grand jubilee top sales rep of the month. Like this is a sales rep of the month here. 60 people at yeah. like, I mean, but his numbers are insane. He's crazy. Yeah, well, and then behind the scenes, he would tell other people, you should be more like Swarupa Priya. She got 80 people to register. The maximum anybody else got was 10, even the wow. top closer. So he'd say, you should be causing like her. So behind your back, he'll tell other people you should strive to be like that person. But to your face, he'd say, you fell so short of your potential. You're a failure. You collapsed the project. You destroyed my mission. Heavy guilt trip. Damn. So yeah. that's the pressure you had while building that YouTube channel, yeah. which, by the way, is a pretty banging YouTube channel. 525,000, I think I saw on that main video. You had your notes. It was like, these are the six things that are like, I got to tell people it's in my yeah. heart. And like, it's so important for people to know after being in this call. Yeah. So I definitely recommend people check it out. I, I'll uh, I'll you. post a link to it in a second. But um, yeah, no, it was... Uh, it is it is a it is good sales skills like so how is that transferring over are you able to use that over here because oh, i mean the youtube yeah. channel is yeah i i kind of feel like I, I could probably do more like to sell the the jewelry that i make but i feel a, a kind of a resistance towards selling after wow, it's like now you're out of the thing and you can't sell yourself just like comedians yeah. we can't sell ourselves we feel bad and that's why everyone in the community, in the congregation, just go over and support the channel, would you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> We're doing God's work over here at Cult Rehab, the, talking to the survivors. There's actually so much to learn. It's so interesting to uh, get into the details of this. We don't even recognize it. We don't, as a culture, we are losing. We're talking. I can't believe the numbers that JW has, numbers yeah. that Scientology has. It's like, it is kind of like our karmas as society to yeah. help get people out. You know, it's, it's actually yeah. a little irresponsible. We're all here alive. They're, I'm talking about irresponsible on God because it's like we're all here, we're alive, and nobody, there's no instructions, nobody knows what to do, and then some guy can just make up instructions, and that's it. And now you're following that guy's system. Yeah, it, it is almost like if it's like it's like this life is like this Leela we're in this game. It is as if we're in Disneyland, but like nobody works there. There's no operator. Like you're just like there, and yeah. you don't know when you got there. You don't know when you're, you're leaving at some point, but you just got to figure it all out yourself. And it almost seems like, like. Like, what do you think of that? Like, do, are, do we try to get other people out? Yes. Did our karma to do that? I think so. I think like, because I would have wanted somebody to stop me from falling into that trap. So I feel like because I got out of it, if I don't speak out, I'm just perpetuating that vicious cycle. And like from the time Arti Rao spoke out against Nityananda for raping her to the time that I went public, there were nine years in which people quietly left the organization and never said a word. 
people who were like the top teachers, the heads, like Nyana Surupa Swami, who was the top recruiter for Sarvagnipita Yajamans, and a lady named Ma Manisha, who developed the syllabus for his inner awakening based on her training with Landmark Forum, like people who created his cult left and never said why. So he would tell us they failed. They weren't able to maintain the lifestyle. They weren't true yogis. They weren't really as sincere as all of you are. That's why they left. And we would believe it because they never said otherwise. So I felt like when I left, I owed it to people to tell the truth about why. And it took me a year. It took me a year to kind of mentally prepare myself for the onslaught because I knew they would go into a full on character assassination. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, no, I mean, they just they come back like, oh, yeah, you're a racist. It's just yeah. you you can't exactly. fight with these people. You're a racist or um, she's she's a rapist. They, they accused me of raping three different people. I saw that. I saw a video from them. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> if I had done any petty. of those things, would I ever have spoken out against him publicly? No way. Like I would have tried to protect my semblance of innocence by staying quiet and not poking the bear like obviously they're very petty these psychos they'll say petty. anything Psychopaths they know these people yeah they can't yeah. take constructive criticism no. <laughs> and, and all these mind games it almost seems like it would come out of them naturally like um yeah. and neil's asking did he ever have a genuine moment with you i wonder no. if there's anything in there but it, it no. does seem like like every moment is a manipulation. Like I can, exactly. she, she could be a little more obsessed. Yeah, she could be a little at, more obsessed. at the time I thought there were genuine moments, but in retrospect, I can see those are love bombing. If right. ever he felt I was going to leave or he had pushed me too far or publicly shamed me too oh. deeply, he would, the next day he would praise me. So like one day he'll he'll yell at me when I'm on stage saying you're ruining my entire mission. And then the next day he would call me and give me a hug and say, I felt your prayers last night to try harder and I'm blessing you with a deeper connection with me. Today you'll succeed. Go give your talk. It wasn't a genuine moment. It was him trying to make me into the perfect subservient slave. Yeah. And you know, Osho actually, as tight as his things are, he yeah. does shout out these old Zen masters that were like, uh, you know, he was a very vicious. You would come inside and he would yeah. ah, hit you. Crap, yeah. Why did you hit me? You are nothing. You are garbage. Go now. And like, you'd have to be like, no, I really want enlightenment. You have to. I need it. Or, you know, like so, these like, loyalty tests. Yeah. There, there was a day, one of the first times I was in one of like the backstage meetings when I first took Brahmacharyam. And there were maybe like five or six of us sitting in his bedroom drinking coffee. He's giving us instructions. And I I turned and I kind of coughed. I had a tickle in my throat. And he said, Ma, did you know in Osho's Sangha, if somebody coughed, he would snap his fingers and the guards would take them out and they couldn't go back for a week. And my eyes got big and I said, I'm sorry, Swamiji, I'm completing. I, I didn't know not to cough in your presence. And he laughed and said, don't worry, dear, don't worry. I'm not Osho. I'm just telling you, you're lucky that you have a guru who will accept your coughing because Osho would not. <laughs> so he'd bring it up like that too. Like he, he would give <laughs> other gurus as an example of you're lucky I'm not as strict as they are. So we'd think like, wow, we're lucky that the sleep deprivation. We're Thank enjoying. you, Babaji. Thank you, Babaji. Oh, exactly. You're so powerful, Babaji. Yeah. You're so much loving kindness. You yeah. took the all our money. Of and hot water in your audience made me sick. So thank you for allowing me to cough because you made me sick. I'm sorry. That's that's terrible. Yeah. That is uh yeah, like like what uh any any I guess the banger events were like uh did you do a lot of dancing? They did dancing yeah, we did. Like. Yeah, every day. Like the morning routine is wake up at 3 a.m., take a cold water bath, 4 a.m. yoga. I did that today, the cold yeah. water. I jumped in the lake. Wow, that's cool. With the group, with the group, cold. It's like a cold plunge group. Yeah, like yeah, when they, it's boys to do like a polar bear jump or something, great. But if if it's if you go to bed at one in the morning and you have to wake up at three to take a cold water bath, it's not good every day. Um, no, no. So yeah, wake up at three, cold water bath, yoga at four. Then you take another bath and get dressed up, puja at six immediately clean up satsang is at seven 
Wow. And, and he just sleeps in. He doesn't even show up till nine. He's sleeping. No, the whole if, uh, if, if then. Because he and, and he would be so hypocritical because he would punish people if they were late for any one of those morning events. And he would, he would sometimes say, like, from today, I declare my integrity with you. I will be here for satsang every day, 7 o'clock. And then for, like, two days, he'd be there 7, 7.05, 7.10. And on the third day, he wouldn't show up. And I'd be on stage talking for an hour instead of him. It was wow, crazy. That's crazy. So you, you grew up Catholic, though, and then you switched yeah. to Hinduism, and then you found Nityananda. Yeah, well, I... I, I was born into a Catholic family, but I went vegetarian when I was seven. Okay. And my school had like a priest who would come in to do Q&A sessions with the kids. And I asked questions like, well, if one of the commandments is thou shalt not kill, why do people kill animals for food? And he'd say, well, animals don't count. It's only don't kill humans. And I said, but it doesn't say thou shalt not kill humans. It says thou shalt not kill. Oh, you are too smart. You are too smart. My other Guruji would beat you, yeah. would beat you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Luckily, it was a vegetarian Guruji. So. Yes, yes. He, he pretended to be. We don't really know. But yeah, I, I kind of lost faith in Catholicism when I went vegetarian because I couldn't believe that any god would create animals only to be killed. Yeah. Did something Sorry. just crash over there? No, there's a there's a truck pulling a loud trailer that just drove by outside. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's great. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, what like yeah, without I don't, I don't you know without uh, hitting anything too sensitive or whatever. Like what, how how far did he take it with you? Like was he like how did he ever touch you? Yeah. Did he? Oh yeah, yeah he did. He it it started really like a mental trip the first time I went to India, where in one of the darshans, which is where we all queue up to get a private blessing from him, he told me I was an incarnation of Devi. And so that's when the, the weird kind of craziness started. I think I might have had a psychotic break trying to process and understand all of his love bombing back then. Okay. But from, from then, that was December 2009 until the time he started the sexual abuse in 2016. So many years went by that he didn't try anything sexual that I genuinely believed he was celibate. And I thought, you know, if he really was a rapist, why didn't he ever inappropriately touch me? Like, how could these allegations be true? I'm here, he's never tried anything, he must be decent. And when I dropped the coffee in 2016 and came back to Canada, he started sending me private messages in Facebook that took a turn. Um, and so he, he, the first one he ever sent me, he sent a little gif of a cartoon plane taking off and the man in the foreground with a tear falling from his eye. And he said, I miss you, dear. Please come back. Okay. Okay. And I thought, you know, but he tells people beyond in, inappropriate and weird because he tells people I never miss anybody. I'm in the space of Advaita. We're all in oneness, whether you're here or there. So I it's feel like you're too presence. special now. You're so special that I must be the one because you are, me. you are breaking my meditation. My, I yeah. cannot meditate. What a psycho. So He's I went back under the guise of creating a YouTube channel for Ranjita. They, they told me she needs a YouTube channel like my YouTube channel. She can't do it by herself. She needs somebody to walk her through it, which is bullshit. They could have gotten anybody there to do it. She's a trained act, Tamil actress, so she could have done it. But I mean, YouTube is a magic thing. It's like if you can crack the nut on it, it is like this magic. But it's almost like saying take your genuine cool thing that you do and just repeat yeah. it and make her do it. It's like if it's oh, not there, it's not there. The, the, the later instructions, so I go to make Ranjita's. And while I'm there, they tell me, now make everybody here create a YouTube channel. Every kitchen volunteer, every temple acharya, every pujari, everyone in Sacred Arts Campus, oh every kid in the Guru Pool, every, every 500 people minimum. It's like, this is not that easy, dude. It's like, what, you're just going to make a YouTube channel? No one's going to watch everyone it. Everyone has to make three videos a day. And at least one of those three videos has to go viral with a million views or else I'm a failure. Oh, my God. Come on. Cool. I hadn't even had a this video. This is unacceptable. I no, know this is how he would give us impossible goals. 
and tell us i'm blessing you with all the energy all the integrity of sadashiva you wow. can do it with my blessings you'll do it if you don't do it it's only because you have incompletions with me and so we'd feel like oh my god i'm not devoted enough or else i would have taken the energy of his blessing and made this vision into a reality so he would he would make us feel like constant failures no no matter what we achieved it was always a microscopic level compared to what he wanted us to achieve. Right. And it, it's only after learning about Keith Raniere that I understand this is what psychopaths do to make people feel like their best, hardest effort is never enough. And so it's systematic. It's part of the brainwashing formula to make people feel like they should always be doing more. Like he, he wouldn't give that blessing because he actually wanted everyone to get a million views and a viral channel. He gave that blessing to make everyone feel like groveling failures, begging him for forgiveness. That was yeah, what I mean, he it's, wanted. It's a, he's, he's cracking the whip. He's really cracking the whip on you. It's like, it's yeah. like, listen, man, I said, I love you. And I said, you're the greatest yeah. it's 500 views. That's it. Like, what do you want from me? You know, I, you can control what you can control. You know what I mean? It's something yeah. genuinely comes from the heart and people are like, write it and make it viral. Like even yeah. you can't, I mean, I work in like movie, like Hollywood and shit. They can't do it. Nobody no. knows. It's a magic sauce that just happens when it happens. And then him, that is like a big manipulation technique, though. He's always like kind of got you on a path, right? Like since you come yeah. in, I find that a lot of them have this thing of like, uh, your life, uh, we need more development in your life. And this yeah. is a life efficiency system. And you're going to go through the program. And then yeah. one day, maybe you'll blossom. I don't know. But um, if you love me, you'll do all the paths, whatever. Yes. So his program, like what's this, like how much of the self-development program do you think is okay? And then how much of it is like, like, where does it become like wonky? Because yeah. I'm into it. You know what I mean? I, I meditate. So that yeah. much of it, I think, is very powerful. It's good for you. From him? You, yeah. I, I think some of it at a basic concept is okay. But the moment he gives his elaboration or his take, it becomes ridiculous and destructive in a person's life. So like right. basic concept, he would tell you, you are the source of everything that happens in your life and around you. Like you're creating your reality. It's basically like what Abraham Hicks would teach of the law of attraction, only he would never give her as a source. Right. So I think generally speaking, that's good because it empowers people to feel like they can recreate their their life based on changing their vision and their operation in it. Yeah, because it is like a confidence issue. Like you yeah. are, it, it does seem like there's a, the sad thing is, is that people want it. Like the people are like, seem hungry for like, yeah. give me a vision, you know, take yeah. everything and yes, be, yes, my yes. Boo, be my Babaji. Tell me just what to do. Yeah. They're just anxious about life. They don't know what to do. Yeah. So yeah. Like what, what, yeah. What, I guess that, sorry, continue. that starts out as a good thing, right? You are responsible for everything that happens in and around you. The next day he'll elaborate on that and say, in Sanskrit, there are two sacred secrets. One is called Anyakara and one is called Swa Anyakara. The Swa Anyakara is how you feel about yourself, who you believe you are. Okay. And that has created your reality till now. But the Anyakara, the opinion other people have of you, is your blind spot. And it's your responsibility to live up to the expectation of other people in your life. So if your mom thinks that by now you should be a doctor who's married with three kids bringing in five figure and like 10 figure, 10, whatever, however much money. Yeah. If you haven't done it because of your SWA on Yakara, you need to drop your low identity of SDHD, self-doubt, self-hatred and self-denial. And live says up it? SDHD. Yeah, he says that. SDHD. SDHD. They always have little systems. SDHD. Yeah. Self denial. Self. Okay. Self doubt. Self hatred. Self denial. The next day, he'll but that's say. That's good, right? We need that as a culture, don't we? Right? Self hatred. Self denial. Self. Self no, doubt. Self be... hatred. Self denial. So the next day is when the brainwashing mechanism kicks in, where he says, "Okay, how many of you last night completed with your mothers? Asked ten people closest to you in your life, because this is what he'd tell us to do: go to the ten people with whom you spend the most time, and ask each of them to write down their vision for you, what they think you should do in your life, what should be your highest achievement, what should be your goal, how should you plan your day, and then align yourself to living up to those ten people's anyakaras for you. Then the next day he'll say. 
if you feel like even that is too low of an image, ask your guru for his anyakara for you. And that's Sadashiva's plan for your life. So then everybody is wow. sending him the request, Swamiji, what's your anyakara for me? And he'll say, become a Sarvagnapita owner, 150,000 US dollars. Become a sannyasi, come here, take the diksha, surrender at my feet, live your life in service to my mission. Wow. And if anybody has a reason, has an excuse not to, because it's never a reason, it's only an excuse, he'll say, you actually have something worse than SDHD. You have GDHD, guru doubt, guru hatred, guru denial. Ah, no, unacceptable. That's even worse than self hatred. If, <laughs> if you don't do what he wants you to do, you doubt him, you hate him, and you deny him. So like in three short days, he'll go from a generally good basic life teaching, which is you create your reality. And if you live yeah. up to your own expectations of yourself and figure out what people want from you and try to align that or complete with them, like help them understand why you're going to do things your way instead of their way, that's pretty good. That's like a, a good thing. Like go to your boss. What do you expect from me as an employee? Here's how yeah, we can good. work on that. Go to your mom. What do you expect from me as a kid? Either, okay, now I'm going to do that or here's, Here's my idea of myself. Let's talk it out. That's good. That's helpful. But he'll take that as a basic concept and then repackage it as forget what those people want. They're not enlightened. They're not your guru. They're not yeah. Shiva. Here's what I want you to do. And this is the ultimate. And if, if you don't do it, it means you hate me. And so it's very black and white. Yeah, that's wild. That's it. That is quite the program. I mean, it's too bad because... It is like a good program, and then they just twist it into garbage yeah. after. And yeah. and all all that that program is that's just him rebranding Landmark Forum. He'll verbatim take a Landmark teaching, like integrity, authenticity, responsibility, and then he'll he'll claim that's his. So. Wow. So he just takes their because it's it's funny because my friend just asked me to do her Landmark class. Yeah, so weird because it's like I do stuff like this too. Yeah, so randomly, I just message yeah. and uh, she's just like, "Yeah, I'm killing it. I'm having such a great time." Like first, she's telling me the story, and I'm like, "Wow, great. Yes, that's positive. That's good." She went yeah. to Vipassana, so I was like, "She's in the community. She knows meditation, yeah. everything." Then she's like, "Yeah, and uh, hey, what are you doing uh, next uh, Wednesday? Next Wednesday? Yeah, I'm doing a landmark forum. You got to come." And I was yeah. like, "Oh, I." And I told her too. I was like, "I have to like make fun of it." Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, I went and it was not much to make fun of, to be honest. It was like pretty reasonably priced. I honestly yeah. think it's how much of a psycho that person is. You yeah. know what I mean? Because like they were, I went, I'm looking for shit to like yeah. make fun of, to be like, oh, they yeah. went to this psychotic thing. It was actually very sweet. It, basically, we only got to maybe the positive teachings though. I don't know what's yeah, going like on when you get level. in. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's linked. I, I forget the details, but I, I saw in one of Leah Remini's exposés, it comes out of Scientology. So it's like the right. entry level stuff will seem good. Like when like when Nityananda rebranded it and said your Anyakara or like your um your your world versus the world is how they would call it in in landmark. Your world is your swa anyakara and the yeah. world's vision of you is the anyakara. So it's wow. like he it's it's good at surface level, but the deeper you go, the more the agenda is now. If this was helpful for you, bring 10 friends to the next time we have a landmark event. Yeah. That's where yeah. it becomes a pyramid scheme. So you got to do the sales. Yeah. It's not about making your life better. It's about making you think it's made your life better. So you'll bring a bunch of more people to pay them. Yeah. And as you invest money, you just think it's better because you just yeah. want to brainwash. You Actually, the money yeah. makes you, adds another brainwash. Like it your does. ego is like, let's I just believe it. I paid for this, so I might as well do it as sincerely as possible get something out of it yeah exactly mm -hmm. um ram lapa uh, is here in the congregation and he's asking what's nityanand uh narcissist plans for the future that's a great question because i know he's got his own island i mean he's got a real evil not villain really. vibe he pretends with... to have his own island but oh no it's not his we're, we're all very suspicious that he just uh, claims that so he's a psycho he just like bought a little piece of land and he goes i own an island it is mine yes. I don't think he's even bought a piece of land because he keeps petitioning like governments to give him pieces of land where he can control the airspace and have the mining rights and no police of that country is allowed to 
come into his land. Like that's what he's asking for. And Does he have the Osho level industrialization? He can he can uh, do the mining himself. He can get his own army. He has a standing army, people with the guns, everything. He has a standing army. I don't think they have guns, or at least they didn't when I was there. But he he created an army. He calls it Sadashiva's army. And wow. these are people. It, it was actually three days after I went public to talk about the Gurukul children beatings. He created something that he calls the Apat Sanyasis. And these are people who take sannyas not because they want to renounce the Maya matrix, as he calls the world, but because they want to fight to defend their guru. And they took a vow to kill or die for him on his command. Oh my God. Three days after I went public. And then I started getting death threats. And I started having people tell me they already know where you live. His apat sannyasis are the ones who accuse me of rape and who they claimed that they filed a lawsuit against me and that the RCMP have a warrant out for my arrest. So Oh yeah, you're in Canada too. Jeez. I'm in Canada. So I went to my local police department with all of this printed out and said I just want to check and make sure there's no actual truth to it and what do yeah. I do? And those I, I have to give props to those officers. They sat with me for three hours and took a full interview and you know, encouraged me to file charges against him in India, which I tried to do, but the corruption there, those police were already bribed by him in Bidini. Oh, for sure. So it didn't really go anywhere, but I was scared. Yeah. And I told them, like, these people have taken vows to kill for him and they're sending me death threats. So what do I need to do? Like, how can I be? I can't take a restraining order out against an entire sangha of international people. Like, what right, do I right. do? Right, right. So he made everyone take this oath. That yeah, he, uh... he and I think there were 50 people who did it on the spot, who oh were married God. or single, like not yet sannyasis in his order. Right. And it was and, and he would use that. That's how he intimidates people into silence so that when they free themselves from his cult they don't speak up because he'll say you'll be the next sarah landry or what what he calls me dirty laundry you'll be the next dirty laundry oh like, shit he's doing i know he, he gets so dirty at the end man for back oh, to grade one for back to grade one, yeah, back to grade one. and after all that good. work you did for them after well, all the he, work you do for them like look at how he played well, Sheila, even on osho she and sheila nothing for me she did nothing for me that's what he'll say useless yeah. i mean even with sheila she goes that bitch betrayed me like it's like yes, that's, that's, she had your back he did the end. everything for you that he diamond watch on your wrist that yeah everything. he is such a flake like obviously you didn't get any of this shit done it is these high powered i mean they happen to be women in these two cases i guess yeah. but they're just so yeah. on it like she is on top of her shit and she makes that yeah. organization run you need that you can't just yeah you know yeah, he's well, too and, silly. And that's what Ranjita is for Nityananda. She's not only like the the head concubine of his harem. She's also the the person everyone in his international cult has to report to. So like buy a town in Canada and report back to Akka or <laughs> go to the, establish <laughs> diplomatic relationships with Nigeria and then report back to Akka when the king is oh. ready to donate land to Nityananda. Like, this guy's high level, eh? He really believes in himself. He does. Well, either he really believes himself or he's brainwashed himself or he's just a very good actor. But whatever it is, he has convinced people to yeah. throw their lives into the gutter for him. Yeah, they. All, it, it does seem like a system, though. It's like people are looking for it. There's always a hungry market. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, so people have to be careful, you know, like the, his yeah. organization... It could be growing still. I mean, how, how do you is, think they're doing? Is. Like there are still people joining because they've anybody who is his devotee, they believe it's their sacred mission to recruit more people to follow him. And he even like in a recent discourse, he was talking about me and my friends who are also with like anybody I've interviewed on YouTube. Oh, shit. And he said, these people who are trying to attack me, they're no small fellows. These are what people. Yeah. Fucking Nityananda. So I guess I'm on the I guess I'm on the hit list, baby. Oh Holy <laughs> shit. That Get is bullshit. For Apat Sanyasis to accuse you of raping them, even though you've oh never met them. Yeah. I've never been 
Oh my god, what a psycho, eh? I, yeah, all the all the scammers are like that too. They just come at you like they don't. There's no shame, no fear. Yeah, it's a big issue. We actually do a lot of shows with uh, Elaine Linga. She has a channel called Invested Lifestyle, and uh, she'll probably be back in the next couple of weeks. But she calls out these MLMs in the Philippines, and like she can't go back. Like they'll yeah, they, they just like try to kill her and stuff. And like she could yeah. go to jail. Like there's like a wanted post or something. She's just yeah. calling out an MLM. They'll do anything. Well, that's that's what would happen if I went to India. Like they, when I tried to file a police complaint for the sexual assault and the kids getting beaten, I finally, after like months of trying to call and follow up and having a lawyer make a call to the Ramanagara police, I finally just called their, their landline and some commissioner answered. And I said, this is Sarah Landry. I've attempted to file an FIR against the fraud who calls himself Nithyananda. Who do I need to speak to to make this case push through? And he said, no, madam, you have to come in person to file an FIR. And so I had my lawyer look into it. And no, you don't have to go in person. You have to send a scan of your passport that's notarized by a notary public. And that's what I did, along with like a hand a handwritten cover letter yeah. And the, the typed it, it was all I had. No, it's India. They don't care. They want to bribe. I mean, it sounds like this guy's like, yeah. I don't even they know if he's working with Nityananda or he's just like, yo, this girl's, you know, well, yeah, come in and do it. Like just other, to other people did that. A, a guy named Varun brought a, a, like an FIR in person to that same police department. They told him to wait. And then goons from Nitya's ashram went and beat the shit out of him. So that's what I think would have happened to me if I went in person. The police will make a call to Achala Swami, who's his so-called legal department head. And then yeah. she would send people either to bully, intimidate, beat, or possibly kill. Like there have been people who wound up dead because of his cult. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's vicious. Like there, there was a young guy in Madurai called Virabhadra. That, that's the name the cult gave him. And Virabhadra. Vir means like strong strength. Like it means yeah, like a powerful like warrior. Warrior of Shiva. Yeah. Virabhadra. So they're trying to pump this guy up as like, we're going to, yeah. Well, it's big in India right now. They made him kill himself. He actually went live on Facebook and hung himself because of this cult a week after he left. But when and you say they made him, like, what did they, oh, he left and they said, like, now you have to do, do that. Or like, what, what did they say? To other, him? other boys from the Gurukul went to his house and said, if you don't kill yourself, we will make your life a living hell and will attack your family. And I heard this from another boy who left around that same time because they tried the same thing to him and he just <sighs> didn't fall for it. But they tried to acid attack his sister. They actually oh did kill his family. And so after that guy hung him, after Virabhadra's suicide, Niti started telling other people, live up to my Anyakara or you'll be the next Virabhadra. And he uses that as the threat. Like if, if somebody leaves his cult now, he'll say you'll be the next dirty laundry. Meaning like he'll do a character assassination against them the way he, he did against them. That's how big you were in the organization. There's the for the fighting boys, they go, You'll be Veer Badra, and then for the for anyone talking shit, yeah. girl, you'll be dirty laundry. You'll be dirty laundry. You'll be the next like that's what they said to my friend Lainey. Like I, I interviewed her on YouTube about her escape story. And she said when she decided she wanted to leave. She didn't even know what I had blown the whistle about. It wasn't sexual assault in her case. She didn't know that stuff was going on. It was just just too detrimental to her life to be there any longer. And he told her, if you leave, you will become the next dirty laundry. And that was her incentive to stay. And she stayed for like another week and then finally jumped the gate and ran because she couldn't take it anymore. Oh but yeah, God. it's... So she got out, she came back over to Canada or to the US. To yeah. the US. So yeah. she's out now. She's good. She's out now. She's out now and she's also gone public. But she told me, yeah, that's what they would threaten people. Like if you leave, you'll become the next dirty laundry. You'll become an anti Hindu. You'll be a racist. You'll be exposed <laughs> to your crimes against the Sangha and against they the like Sangha. Yeah, it's you've you've insulted all the Hindus. What yeah. have you done? What have you done? Well, he is the leader of Kailasa, the world's only Hindu nation, and the king right. of two billion people. <laughs> he invents numbers. It's funny. 
<laughs> he is silly. Like his theories yeah. are so wackadoo and he's such a silly yeah. guy. We really got to do more video clips on, on him. He's a, uh, yeah, he's a, uh, he, he is like, so, he, it is like so buffoony, but it, yeah. it's, like it's he's a gangster though like he'll kill yeah, people he, for he this. is a gangster he will kill people he wow. like one of the gurukul kids who was the one of the first kids to leave that kid called his mother and said i want to go home i'm scared because swamiji told all of us that he's going to initiate us into black magic and we're going to do special homas to kill his enemies and to kill his detractors and i don't want to do that wow so that lady took her son out and the next week, Nitti accused her of being a drug trafficker and accused her husband of trying to prostitute underage girls. So, oh, my God. Yeah, so he it's like he abuses people. And then when those people pull free of his crime syndicate, he'll put a false accusation on them. And That's because terrible. they're in India, it's more dangerous. Like, at least here in Canada, somebody falsely accuses us of something it's not actually going to turn into a prison sentence because the yeah. court system cares about truth here not there so yeah yeah no they don't they yeah they're probably on the take like they're pr yeah. it's yeah no it's easily corruptible i mean he's nityananda like from the sounds of what a psycho he is he's definitely yeah. got the police in his pocket they could be scared yeah. of him Definitely. Like they could be scared. They could be like, if we don't do it, he'll kill us. Like he's not even paying them. He's just like, do it. I'll, I'll bless you. I'll send a blessing. He had a file, and I, I, Ma Achala Swami, who's again like the head of his legal department, she showed me this file, and it's a judge who ruled against him in a case died in a car accident. The okay. lawyer who represented Arti Rao died mysteriously. Like, oh my god, there, there was a list of people who were involved in the judicial trials against him who were on the other side. Like, 90% of them are dead. And Nityananda, he, he claims he did this mystically because the cosmos is protecting him. But at the time, at the time, I thought that bullshit and believed, like, wow, he's. Ganesha is removing his obstacles or whatever. BS He's so he silly. Do. They go, they go, did you kill him? Did you kill him? And he says, yes, yes, yes I did. I, I did. Cast the spell. Ah, you are dead. You'll be dead next too. He's a psycho, dude. He, yeah. That's too much. Yeah. He really like, yeah, he, he, he just admitted. Well, I mean, yeah, he's, I guess he's sending the blessing through the universe to like, end that guy's life. that's obviously not possible. The universe no. is a loving kindness energy. If it was, I wouldn't be here. Like, <laughs> obviously yeah yeah um if it was what do you mean like oh if it was like that vicious of an energy no you would you, you're, you're still standing i mean yeah. you stood up to this giant organization that's pretty badass i mean you could make yeah. like a movie about this or something are you right. writing a script you're doing it but you're going to hollywood with it this is so it. this is tight it's good see if, if hollywood comes knocking i mean why not i'm i'm definitely going to write a memoir about everything yeah. that Start with the book. Honestly, like yeah. uh, Natalie Grant's book, Cult Girls. Um, I mean, it's done. Like I'm writing on it for a TV show that like, who knows? I've been writing it for like a year or two. And like, who knows? Yeah. It goes through development and I'm getting paid to write it. But it's like, could take years, you know? So That's cool. no, it's, it's, yeah. it's sick that you're uh, that you're starting to put these together. I mean, the YouTube yeah. channel that you have is already the start of a career, you could say. It is uh, It is like speaking. Well, yeah. And in a really sad way, even the stage time you did there, these karmas are, you know, mm -hmm. It did prepare thinking, me to be able to do podcasts like this one or to be able to just speak yeah. spontaneously. So I remember we used to do the stand up comedy show where these this guy would like yell at us and it was like and then he and then he would like he would just heckle us. It was like this big big guy named oh, Rudiger and it was like a drug, it was like a weed room, but like they had a lot of drug addicts, like ex drug addicts. Yeah. So they'd be taking like other medicines. So we'd go up and be like, This guy looks like an idiot. Like he'd just be screaming. Oh, no. Like this mom, th this guy's mom thinks he was a mistake. And like, you just like, yell oh out shit. God. And then he's like, because of me, you guys are tough. And everyone's like, yeah, thanks, Rediger. Like everyone was like, yeah, geez. Oh. Yeah, that's, yeah. Such yeah. a psycho. You but you had that kind of training. Could you ever heckle him back? Um. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can get a good rip on him. And then he would be like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And like, he would take, yeah, he was so cool. He was well, like, that's good. He was like some kind of a weird like toughness coach or something or whatever yeah but uh yeah no you did you did the stage time there you performed a bunch and then it is like you know you're used to performing like that so i think you could do it um 
yeah. definitely putting these together as speeches because it does seem like like you know like what's the solution to it like and and i do want to ask you ask one last question about like how getting out but yeah. also like what what do you think uh like like i do feel like we got to put on our own programs and our own things that are almost like you know, it's it's hard to compete because the guy is hilarious too, and he's yeah. dressed up. Well, but it's almost like it's almost like the righteous thing to do is to compete with it, to have like even better stuff, and to have even better message, and to have yeah. like cool things that people can do. It's yeah. hard without the hard brainwashing techniques. Yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> I've thought about that too. Like off off finding something that people could take as like, you know, a, a, a like somebody who's addicted to what is it heroin might like step down to methadone if they're getting clean right what can a person who's like a cult addict step down to but well we got to make some programs here i do call this I, an anti-cult cult sometimes like we need some kind of programs i like it but i i think the best anti-cult cult i mean i i don't know i haven't heard your sales pitch yet but for me it's like the work of dr stephen hassan yes who, yes yeah that's good it's like I d once we can identify the aspects of mind control that have been used on us, that breaks us from that cycle. And, you know, Dr. Yanya Lalik, she's done some great work, too, in, in identifying the cult tells and, and figuring out if what you're in is a cult. Yeah, that's um, good. That is good to systematically break down because that's what they're doing. They're actually taking your yeah. life and being like, OK, uh, I need to keep her busy for the next six months thinking yes. about the festival. So then... Yeah. By the end of six months, that'll be emotional investment to me. Then she'll be obsessed. Like th this is all yeah, like part of it's, it's all like written down and yeah, so systematic. They've taken a human, yeah. almost like mass control techniques. They've created yeah. these courses. Yeah. yeah. How do you how do you get out of it? Like, I mean, what's your what's your awakening, and then what is the process out? Yeah, for me, the awakening was in a few short days. I realized everything he was doing was a lie. And it started with two of the kids from the Gurukul crying to me and telling me that they're scared to go back to India because they don't want to get beaten again. And I wow. pushed them to describe that because he promotes his Gurukul as a nonviolent place where kids will be treated like yoga purushas and worship right. as God goddesses. And no teacher will ever yell at them because oh. yelling is a form of verbal violence. So I had- That's loving kindness teaching. Yeah. I had cognitive dissonance, which is like the new reality presented to me doesn't match with the false reality I was trained to believe in. So I asked these kids to, to describe what they mean, like what's the root cause of their fear, which is another thing we were trained to ask, like what's the root of this? And they told me that they were all forced to beat each other as a way to break their physical patterns that stop them from being fully integrated to Nityananda. And that this had happened on December 31st of 2017. And that they were told because the $16,000 program participants weren't reading blindfolded or remote viewing, it was the kid's fault. Because if the kids had properly gone into Shaktipada or like mirror neurons with these people, they would have caught the powers. And because these people don't have the powers, it's the failure of the kids. So they had to beat each other up until the Gurukul teacher's instruction was until you bleed or cry. If I don't see blood or tears, you're faking it. And so these kids were traumatized. Uh, the girl told me that for the next week, they were locked in a cage in the bottom of the thousand bed dorm with bed sheets kind of lining the chicken wire that made the cage so that people couldn't see them. And that was for their bruises to heal. Some of them had like bloody noses and black so they put eyes. them in a jail to cover their bruises? So that none of us would see that they were physically injured or else we'd ask questions. We How were small all was this jail? It was like jailed in like this, like this big to it cover the bruises? It was about the size of three bedrooms plus a hallway and like a public bathroom. So they so were just, they were beat up and bruised and then they'd be like, you have to stay inside this room. They were beaten and bruised and then they were locked in their sleeping quarters. So yeah, it, the the girls on one side of the building, the boys on the other side of the building. And Why they got to enforce that rule? They that's brutal. Oh that's yeah, so the, sad. the that's kids so were sad. separated. Girls weren't allowed to talk to boys. They weren't even called girls and boys. It was like divine consciousness in female bodies or divine consciousness in male bodies. Wow, and so, so progressive. Told, You're not your body. Your body has these 
patterns and these barriers preventing you from surrender to Swamiji, we're not hurting your consciousness. It's not violence against you because you are not your body. We're just breaking your body. And that's oh how God. it was justified to them. So, well, I mean, I mean, with, with Osho, like he had every, like that was part of what made it like cool and hip and fun to go. But Nityananda doesn't even have that. Like the Osho had that free love and like they're doing yeah. works whatever. But Nityananda's like, no. So like, what's well, Nityananda thing? He's like, only oh, have sex with me? Too, but they were kept secret. It was only the people who were involved in them who knew they were happening. So most people in his cult don't know they're in a sex cult because they haven't been part of that inner circle. But anybody who's ever been on his SM team knows he's having constant orgies. And... Yeah, anybody who he's ever tried to sext with, who he who he's asked for nude photos, they know there's something suspicious going on. But they don't talk about it because he tells them, I have no lust. I have no sexual desires. I'm doing this for your spiritual growth. You still have lust. You have sexual patterns. I'm hell? offering my body for you to break your patterns. So he'll make people feel like he's not He's like, you did it. it. Yeah. Jeez, he told me, like, for example, when he first asked me to send him a nude selfie, and I said, but if you are Shiva and your third eye is open, why would you need a naked photo? You can just look through my Sarah story. Landry making arguments. Don't make yeah. arguments. He said, why are you? Why, don't be smart. <laughs> well, he told me that was my stupid Western logic interfering in our relationship. Oh and he God. told me that he doesn't want to see the nude photos but through his third eye, he could see that I was trapped with a shyness pattern that I needed to break in order to achieve my higher potential. Oh my God. But he's like a silly, he's like writing a sitcom. It's like he's writing a TV I, show and he's in it. Yeah, he is, he's the star of his own show for sure. It's but, so silly. Like what yeah. a wackadoo move. It's like something that should so, be in a sitcom. See, and, and I wouldn't have gone public if it had been just me or just grown-ups, but he did this to 15-year-old girls, 16-year-old girls, 17-year-old girls, and they feel a, all of well, these... They, they could folks, fall for that dumbass, like that, like, all, I was testing your shyness. And they would yeah. probably be like, you're right, I'm shy or whatever. Breaking your shyness. These are Indian girls with Indian parents who are then told by him, if you ever tell anybody, or if you ever leave me, I will leak these photos to the Indian media. No boy will ever marry you. No career will ever hire you. Your parents will disown you. You will lose Sangha and you'll lose your family. You'll have nothing in the world. And so these girls are trapped for life because he convinces them to send him a nude selfie. So it's not just sextortion, it's also a complete mind trap like they believe and and what i think i would want all of these girls to know for example if any of them are listening to this he will never leak their photos to the media because they're wearing his kantamala like they're wearing little necklaces with his photo they're obviously his disciples so if he leaked their nude photos that would prove everything i'm saying it would sir it would work against him so i yeah. i feel like they need to know yeah, that no, that's his leverage you don't want to ever blow that cover. It's always better to keep it like exactly. I could leak it. But you don't want to send it. I believe that he'll release the pictures. Yeah. I think Epstein did that too. Epstein did it. Ranieri did it. Nitti would Ranieri. also make make them engage in like a, a group sex and film it. And he would watch it on like a, a Zoom live and record it and then tell them, if you leave, I'll publish this video um it, you it's say it in the video like it's it's like he's got the tape and he's like if you leave i'm leaking he it have, he would have a lady named ma prana priya tell them afterwards after she was the one who would film it so i feel like prana priya and ranjita they're like the Ghislaine maxwell to his epstein yeah, so they're, the they're like the the... women grooming the other girls and enabling it and then there's a guy he calls sundareshwara doing it to the boys so he's got like a different team you know, doing this to the girls and another team doing it to the boys. And this is quite the operation. I mean, it's so hard yeah. working. These psychos, man, they work so hard, but they're really making you do the work. You work they're, hard. They, they don't work hard. They lay back and eat all day and and lay there like job in a hut and make everybody do everything for them. It's they basically like my job is 
like my job is to make a sex tape so that you do your job that's basically his rationale probably it's like yeah. he wakes up his schedule is like yeah. well okay we got uh, we gotta make some blackmail stuff on her and her and her like it's like probably on a list like yeah. that ranjita's probably on a list like okay yeah. we don't have any blackmail stuff on these three so yeah. they're probably ready and then this is yeah you know, crazy. get me this guy get me her he does he'll keep a list for sure because yeah that's yeah, it that he, his job it is mind mass control mind control yeah. mass control what are they doing keep tabs all that stuff recently one one of the other escapees told me a story that i can't give too many details or people will be able to figure out who the okay. the, the victims are but there was a, a girl in his audinum who was underage and didn't have her own cell phone didn't really have any link to her parents or the outside world and then one day that guy Sundarishwara started flirting with her and telling her, I've secretly been in love with you this whole time. I know I'm supposed to be a sannyasi. I'm a brahmachari, but wasn't I'm... he the recruiter for the gay side? Yes. But he yeah. told a girl that. Yeah, because he's I... not actually gay. Niti told everyone you can only get enlightened if you're bisexual. And that's how he would make the girls do girl on girl stuff and the guys do guy on guy stuff. So yeah, he this took. Is, we got to come back. We got to do. Yeah, more. We almost got. I'm process. I'm like. Yeah, like a lot. It's a lot. I now I feel. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, oh oh man. Oh, it's. But I know it was really hard for you, but hearing yeah. it is like it's a lot of processing. No, no. It's we got, you got to come back. You got to come back. This is amazing. These stories are incredible. Everyone with this. Yeah. No, it's important though. We have to tell the culture. It's, it's great karmas yeah. that you're doing it, and that's why your channel's banging, and everyone should check out yeah. your channel. And uh, sorry to interrupt. Though continue. That's continue. Okay. Sure. Well, just the, the, how you said he keeps a list. This is how I know he keeps a list because this, this poor girl starts getting really intensely pursued by Sundareshwara and he's like the lead for the boys. So he's considered like an ashram authority, like one of the top okay. people in the audience. And he's Nityananda's biological nephew. So he's like set up to inherit. Oh, him. family, family connections. Oh, nepotistic, of course. Yeah, and the nepotism. Yeah. Of course he's going to do nepotism. So she feels like she can't say no because of who he is. And he gives her a cell phone. So she starts chatting with him, sexting with him. She is She has taken a vow of brahmacharyam. So she believes she's, you know, meant to be celibate but celibate, yeah. also feels like she has to say yes to him and then one day she gets a text from her cousin who was also a male devotee of this cult and that cousin some somebody in his family forgot to log out of his facebook account and he was in a chat group with sundareshwara and nityananda and in that chat group nityananda asked sundareshwara give me a list of all the girls you're attracted to and Sundareshwara sent that list. And then Niti told him, as my as your guru, it's my Anyakara for you to have sex with all of them, then report back to me. And so she was a game between Sundareshwara and Nityananda. Holy shit. Because of that, she tried to kill herself. And that's when her parents found out what was going on and they took her out of the cult. But this, this is like how he messes with people. And then I've heard... Other girls who he did this to, including Nandita, like one yeah. of the Sharma daughters, Sundareshwara did this to Nandita. And Nityananda yelled at Nandita and said, because you did this with Sundareshwara, you've broken your vow of chastity to me. So he makes Oh, these my God. It's just all twisted and turning. He, like Yeah, he makes the girls take vows of chastity to him. And then he gives Sundareshwara the instruction scam on them find a way have sex with them so that he can then break their self-esteem and make them feel like they have to earn their way back into his good graces so it's like this is how he keeps the girls in a cycle of guilt is he does he have feelings like does he get feelings for anyone or is it all just a this is, this is my mind game people. now i have your blackmails yeah no he he sees what he can get from people i think he saw in ranjita her psychopathy, how she will be motivated by power. She can yell at people. She can bully people. She can beat people. So she's an asset to have by his side. And she has dirt on him. If he ever insults her or sends her out, she could go public and say the video was not really morphed. That was me giving him a blowjob. 
So Ranjita is like utility value for him. Wow. He'll see somebody like the Advaits. They beat kids. They can train the Gurukul. Cool. They can groom kids to be sexual servants. Their utility value. I don't think he cares about people. I think he just cares about what people can give him. You know, this guy named Balaji, who's his follower, he was giving everyone the instruction, the only way to enlightenment is sannyas. Give up your life, become a sannyasi. Yeah. So a devotee of his, Balaji, asks him for sannyas. Niti knows Balaji is a multimillionaire. So he says, no, no, no. For you, the path to enlightenment is not sannyas. It's to become a billionaire and give the money to me. So he sends him back to be like a worker bee. Wow. Early to generate funds for him. So he says, what is your karmas? Well, that, but then he rewrites the car. His work yes. in his mind is now I'm doing my karmas. He literally had a program called rewrite your past to rewrite your future, where he would tell people, these are your karmas as your guru when rewriting them. So yeah, you're, 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 you're in oneness with his. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not go that far. No, no, no. I know. <laughs> Let's not say that I'm in one. I totally. Oh my god! But I like that you. I do like that when he said sent a picture and he said you said you use your third eye. You fuck. Oh my god! What a psycho. There That's... were some times I would call him out, like the when when he finally punished me. He told everyone that I had become arrogant because he wanted me to pick another woman to have a threesome. And I said, no, I'm not attracted to other women. I'm straight. You're so arrogant. And then why he, are you so arrogant? Well, he said he, he had always told me I was his Devi. I was his Shakti and he's my Shiva. <sighs> okay. And at that time in his mission, he was, he was boasting that anything he does, there's always a Shastra Pramana. There's like a proof in one of the ancient scriptures for why he does everything. So I said, what's the Shastra Pramana for Shiva having a threesome with Devi and some other woman? Yeah. And that was my arrogance. How dare I ask him that? Oh, uh, you tried to get the, oh, no, I actually looked up the legal code. And uh, yeah, I I mean, that and... never really actually happened in Kailasha. So. so so then you were able to avoid his sexual advances. From that day on, up until then, I I didn't. Thank God I never had sex with him. It, it only went as far as hand jobs. And that's oh why in, in videos, I, I didn't, like I've been accused of body shaming him because I revealed that he has a micro penis. It's not to, I mean, I'm trying to keep a straight face. It's a funny word, but Silly, it's not whatever. to body shame him. It's just because anybody else he's ever abused will know I'm telling the truth because they will have also seen it. You, know? you got to so hit him where it hurts, these guys. That's the only thing that'll hurt his feelings. It, yeah. Literally nothing else will hurt it. Probably no, this whole no. podcast, he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I did it. I did it. I'm a I psycho. It. And then I you go, it. microphenis? And he's like, oh. Get to them. Call them. Oh, my God. What a psycho. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. But he does seem like sexually like just any anyone. Anyone he's... He, it's all just like power games, it seems like. Yeah, so he's not even trying fun. to like fiend after you for sex. It's more just no. like, how can I dance around with it? Well, there, there's a, a book that I read after I got out called The Mind Control Manual. And it's okay. it's part of the Take Back Your Life program. And in the, the mind, mind Control, control Manual, it sounds like some cult training. I, but it's called it's, it's non training. It. It's like how to recognize mind control if it's been right. done to you. And it gives like the, the layers of control a psychopath can have over a victim. And it said the strongest form of control is sexual control. And that women and this is something i've read like psychological research about that it's it's not just in mind control manual it's something 100 if you're sleeping with someone you do get like you can people, yeah. they, people start becoming like each other almost well and and something mental happens where you become devoted to that person especially women to a man like biologically yeah. women are programmed now this is your provider do everything to keep him happy and it goes back to biological necessity if you get pregnant you need somebody to take care of you because that's yeah so you process. you get that stockholm syndrome almost so you're like yeah. you're dependent on them so you're like fall in love with them that's part of and they use so, that too yeah so for women the, the the easiest way to control a woman is to make her sexually dependent and so i feel that's why he makes all the women sexually dependent i think maybe he's gay but he just toys yeah. with women for the dependency. And that's why he also preys on men because it, it's 
he's, he, 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 honestly, he's such a psycho that they go beyond. Sometimes people are such psychos that they just go beyond like loving, caring relation. That's all yeah. so basic for. That's for yeah. us that can be manipulated and controlled. We uh, yeah. we're falling in love and all. That's all nonsense to them. They, oh, it's yeah. like they don't have the feelings. That it's not. It's nonsense. It's all that they're like, that's why these idiots get brainwashed because we yeah. can just play with them and that. And then it's all just a pawn in their game. Like, OK, yeah. so you're going to hook up with her. But if you oh, it's, and he, applauds, so he applauds Weinstein, he said the, the the complaining women who started the Me Too movement went back on their contract. They they knowingly traded sex for movie roles. Oh and my God. when they started speaking out against Weinstein, Based on Shiva's agamas, they are abusing him. He didn't abuse them. Yeah, well, he is just this turnaround expert. Like, he'll ask you for nude pictures and then be yeah. like, I was testing your, oh. That... Yeah, I was breaking your shyness pattern. Your, your shyness body. pattern was too high. That's why it was for your teaching. Oh, my God. What a cycle. It is like something that, like, I could write into a podcast, like a silly sh guru character. But yeah. uh, he, he, he does it all in real life. Yeah. So I see David Barron wrote, he's neither bi nor gay. Yeah, I don't know what he is. He He's just a narcissist. It's, it's yeah, power. Power, 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 power is everything. Power. That's true. It, he, he also has intense vanity and narcissism. Right. So he keeps mirrors everywhere. One of the rules of his ashram is you can never sit between him and his mirror. He needs a clear <laughs> view of himself at all times. He's so evil. <laughs> The he evil. Started, he started getting like his brows done and wearing false eyelashes and all. You guys, hundred percent watching Disney. That's so did Disney bad guys. They were all gay for a while. Yeah. It was like part of some hate. Like it, it was like, just part of how they were writing them for like 15, 20 years. It's but, weird. Uh, yeah. yeah, which is weird because now a lot of conservatives are complaining about Disney and saying that they're grooming kids to be gay or something. But I yeah. think it's opposite. If anything, they've always had evil, evil. All every yeah. evil character is always a gay guy. Yeah. Or based on like a trans character or something like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's got that fat flamboyance, you know. Yeah. Right? He does. He has a flam. He actually told us everyone who's his devotee has to have Vedic flamboyance. So be flamboyant, but in sari, dhoti, bindi. You know. Yeah, yeah. Be with Shiva and Shakti. Just be silly yeah. in life. They are dancing. Let let the feminine energy dance through. Yeah, that's no, what you awesome. say. Yep. Yeah. Let the let feminine. The One of the funny things, like he. He would have daily kirtans. So before his satsang discourse, yeah. once once he was on the kirtan stage, is like song and dance. By the way, for people listening, like yeah. it is like a song and dance time, right? You yeah, know, this is. is we need this in the call. We're lacking it in the culture. Well, Nobody has it, and then it's day in hell. Like the best thing that happened in hell was the daily kirtan. Oh, it was so good. Eh? It was it was a nice. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But That's he great. would do this thing, like the, the hall was always divided, women on one side, men on the other. And he's on the stage, and he'd look, and he'd do this or this, depending on whether he likes or dislikes the per the, the dancing. So the there's, dancing. Always, there's always a competition, men versus women, whose dancing is more enjoyable to him. So he this is a whole game and a whole little universe he's yeah. built for you, like a whole little, yeah, yeah. So you're not dancing for the enjoyment, you're dancing to please him. Yeah. And yeah. That, oh, and so for, there's always yeah. a spin. There's always a spin to it. He does just make watching, it all evil. What's yeah. that? I was watching a documentary about ancient Rome, and there's like Caesar sitting in the Colosseum and trying to decide whether a gladiator lives or dies. And I yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. that's nifty. He was even like, like that. Yeah. Apparently, the dictator of uh, El Salvador, I want to say. I think he's doing that right now as we speak. Like he's a yeah. he's a psycho. He's taken the country. He is like a populist, but then he's like this rock and roll cool guy that people like kind of watch as like the celebrity, the star. And he, uh, yeah. yeah, but he's he's a killer. Yeah. Like he's just killed. That's a bunch another of country. Nithi is trying to petition to establish Kailasha. Wow, I bet they love each other. You know, I bet they would. I or actually, they'd repel each other because there can only be one psychopathic That's dictator. True. So they're, yeah yeah exactly they're gonna have a meeting and they're gonna be like listen someone's got to bow down here yeah yeah some kind of weird power move has to be made there so know, it's so weird so um, you're in television i heard you mention i have a pitch for a show that i think would be awesome oh my god it's how like, is this not it this is amazing I'm, it's like uh, survivor. Continue, i can hear you yeah it's like survivor but it's all cult leaders so you get like kim jong -un, nityananda keith ranieri oh um, that's sick David Miscavige, Teal right. Swan, like anybody. It's a great cartoon. And that's then the goal is the winner is the one who brainwashes all the others. 
Like put all yeah. these narcissistic psychopaths together. They can each bring like their number one. So he can bring Ranjita. Yeah. You know, Rainier, you can bring whatever. This is a great cartoon show. Like this is a great like Adult Swim show, and they yeah. all land on like it's got to be like they, they land on an island, and they like yeah. they, they could even beam in and be like, okay, yeah. Ranjita, start getting start making the tent, and I'll do this or whatever, and yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and my 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 theory is okay. They get arrested for their crimes as cult leaders, but instead of being taken to a prison, they're taken to an island, and it's. Like the host of survivors there, like welcome to Cult Island, and yeah, and then and then whoever wins like kills him, and then just kills yeah. everyone. Whoever They're like, yeah, we brought your families, and we're gonna eat you or something in front well, of everyone. They're or like the the least popular psychopath, like whoever gets voted off first. But yeah, I right. think it would be David Miscavige. Miscavige then, would like, probably lose first, and then they'd like yeah. eat him alive or something. Well, no, then then he gets booted off the island. He goes to like high security prison. Like oh, you, you go to a high security prison, eh? Okay, it's interesting. Prison when you're voted off, but I just think yeah. it would be hilarious to see them all torture each other. I, and this I just is see them. The felt. I see them doing like a blood blood sacrifice. Like yeah. look, prison life in prison is good too, but I could yeah. see like a really like like your season finale is like a really torturous like yeah. blood ex like I eat you alive in front oh of your wife and kids, and then you now they're it. my yeah. wife and kids. It took yeah. a turn. I, I didn't see that coming, but yeah, there's yeah. It's, a, it's a bunch of psychos. You need some people on the island to manipulate because that's okay. almost like half the game. It's like, okay, who's yeah. going to brainwash him first they and then who's going to start manipulating? The manipulation. Like, if you, I don't know, I never watch reality shows, but I've seen commercials for them. And there's always like little pacts that get formed and psychological games. I think, I think it would happen organically. Uh, it, organically, no, this would be a, like an amazing show. You're basically talking Thank about you. like top tier players. Yeah. all competing together being psychos all at once yeah that, it, it would be a, a, a such a fun show to watch and yeah if you give them their sidekick that's the key yeah, exactly the sidekick, they're nothing because the, but, the sheilas are sometimes like the brains behind yeah they're the crazy narcissists the best though is when they turn like because they'll turn on you too so it's like yeah. if it would be funny to see osho go down because sheila's with like well you shouldn't have talked shit and yeah, like, like he, he hooks up with Nityananda behind Ranjita's back, and now like there's exactly. a weird, yeah. They do an announcement where they're like, "I I was with him, but there's a new generation, tough titties." Yeah. Yeah. She has these tough titties <laughs> in the thing, like while they're eating him alive. Oh my god, yeah, that would be a great TV show. That'd be a great cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I'll send you. I have a cartoon pitch about uh, about something. I don't want to say similar, but uh, yeah, I pitched it years ago. It's too dark, but I'll send it yeah. to you. It's it, really, it's I I like that genre. And it's, it is just yeah. about getting to meet the right person. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, I feel like we're doing it right now with the YouTubes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, because in the future, the people who make TV shows are going to be just like, yeah, I have a YouTube channel and there's this many people. So it'll just yeah. sell. So listen, we're on the path. We'll make the show. We're going to do it. That would be awesome. That would yeah. be awesome. Well, they need an alternative. It's like, you got to work on your one hour special. Maybe it's like, it is like a comedy. Yeah. I mean, I can see you going comedy, but listen, the meditation scene has like some banger speakers. Like, what do you yeah. think of a guy like I? You know, I usually can't recommend this to people because he's so silly sounding, but mm -hmm. I love him. I think he's doing a truly a um, like a loving kindness teaching, beautiful like one hour like to two and a half hour sermons. No, no script. And here he's going to tell you why in a second. I'll show you. Tell me if you know who this is, and tell me if you got to go soon. Yeah, I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. If I look distracted, I just keep. Turning to close the notification. Cool, 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 cool. Check this out. This is Matt Kahn. True divine nature. So, I mean, oh, I love the, the bell. Indian prophecy. I do. As a mystic and an intuitive, which I still do everything intuitively, the words I say are intuitively guided. And through. No script. This guy's going, look at this. This is an hour. No script. The words yeah. I offer comes an energetic vibration that we are all receiving. So, this is a group healing as much as it is a sitting a dialogue, and all of those things at once. And then throughout my journey as a mystic, again, I've never really had a formal teaching other than my own intuition. I don't read much of anything. I just download. <laughs> he, like, it, okay, it, it's actually very funny. He he does like, these stand-up, like, it is like stand-up. Yeah. It's almost like he's doing Portlandia bits. Like, he's kind of making fun of them oh, for being these, yeah. like, but, but, it is beautiful teachings. I don't know if you're into it. I, I've heard them called like heart-centered teachings or like loving-kindness teachings. 
But I do. I mean, this is where I think a lot of anti-cult people, this is where I would lose them because I okay. still believe in like crystal healing and tarot oh, true. and Arcturians and Pleiadians and star seeds. I love oh. that. That's like, oh, I, I love that. I love that. That's, that's, that's my favorite stuff. So if he says he's channeling the Pleiadians, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and hear what he has to say. Like, I don't These, know. I found this I like incredible it. Pleiadian channel. It was yeah. so beautiful. And, and like, and I'm like, okay, so the Pleiadian channel, I can never find it anymore, but it's basically like a channel where they'll have like, you know, like Lord of the Rings, there's the elves. Yeah. So it'll be like one of them and it'll be, and it'll be like, maybe like Donald Trump, like yelling. And then the thing will say, oh. prophecy is here. New awakening is around, is upon us, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, what is, like, I'm like the landmark thing. I'm like listening to it to make fun of it. I yeah. start listening. I'm like, this is tight back to back. Every right. line is tight. Right. Like I love, I love listening to Abraham Hicks. Yeah. I've heard people say they were a cult too, but you know what? I like those teachings. I like it. <laughs> Abraham it's, Hicks, eh? Are you to Rumi? Me. I love Bashar. I love Rumi. Absolutely. It's all I, every one of these cards, all rippers. Every card, every every card is so tight. What do you got? That, that's my new historical deck. My friend Jordan gave it to me as a gift, and I've been pulling a card a day as like my daily meditation. Damn. The artwork she does is stunningly beautiful. The messages in the book are amazing. Like it's just yeah, yeah. I love this stuff. I, so I mean, crystal jewelry. That's how Dude, I you got the crystals. Listen. Let's get into the crystals. Maybe we'll do an oracle card, and then we're gonna call. And then I'm gonna call it because I do sure. have to go dancing, and I, you know I think it's important yeah. to do it. You know, um, yo, let's put your. So this is great though. Like we are meant to be creative in this life. I feel like, and that's what a lot of people they get us these cults. Because yeah. they give us this creative outlet. They give us this permission to like, okay, we have a dance planned every day and we have a song planned every day. It's like we, and we don't know to just do this for ourselves. But so it's great that you're making art and, uh, you know, you're putting it out there. This is your, this is your Etsy. Yeah, that's my Etsy. I'm thinking of doing a video soon about Moldavite and the healing properties, like the awakening. Moldavite. Properties. Yeah. Well, I was watching some rapper. I was watching this rapper, his inside of his house. I think it was, uh. The guy that wrote, oh, like Kanye West owes him like $6 million. I forgot his name. Whoa. Incredible rapper. He has like a giant Moldavite this big. They're green, right? Yeah, they're green. Giant okay. Moldavite? That's unheard of. That's crazy. Is it real? I think it was like Sean, Big Sean. Yeah, Big Sean has one in his house. And he says it's like a Moldavite. And it's like this big. Why? How, how big are they usually? The, the, the biggest one that's ever, ever been found was, I think, 100 grams. Okay. 100 and grams is the biggest? Like, huh. That would be like this. Ooh, maybe he had a rock and yeah. then like there was Moldavite like just like just one corner on it. of it. Yeah. Maybe it was just played it on a little bit or it was yeah. like, it was like, this is a piece of rock with the, the Moldavite melted in. But you that walk into Big cool. Sean's house and it's the yeah. first, it's like his first piece, you know, you walk in and you see the crystals. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, I'll that's check great. that out. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I got to find that. But these are great. Uh, I remember years ago I went to like, one summer I just went to buy, like I was in a crystal store and the yeah. guy selling the crystals, he just like, just not even shy about it. He's like, he's like, Hey, he's like, do you have a girlfriend? I was like, no, he's like, just get like, you'll get, they'll just, you'll get one. Like people just like hook up with you and shit like that. Yeah. And it's true. It's like, honestly, I highly recommend this, these pieces. Cause what he basically told me, he's like, you put it in the room and then it's like a little talking piece. So people come over, you have a little talk. Now you're talking about Shiva and Shakti and the energies and this and that. Yeah. And he's like, kid, that's you need that. And it's uh, no, it's good advice. Yeah. Talking about crystals. like. Well, they correspond to different parts of our body. They could be exactly. like using an excuse to be like, okay, this crystal is for like this root chakra. It means yeah. this. Like it does seem like even with the Rumi Oracle, a lot of the stuff that I used to just think is like so goofy and like, oh, you're an Oracle or like, Oh, your rock brings in energy. Yeah. It's, I don't know. See, it's like, it's like the guy selling the crystal. It's like, was he saying that the crystal is going to go to the universe and come back? And then now I'm, they're attracted. Or is he saying like, you get them in the door and then this is a cool thing that you'll connect over and it'll be like a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. in that sense, it does work. I don't know. Yeah. It's a reminder <laughs> to talk about it and think about it. If like I listen to a lot of Bashar and he'll call something like that your permission slip. You did the work wow. you talked to her, you asked her out, you brought her over. <laughs> but 
you believe you're going to be successful because this guy told you that this crystal will make it happen. And that gave you the confidence to go out there and talk to this girl and do this thing. You're so. eight, 87. This is very reasonable. And this is a nice, I mean, it's small, but like, this is a nice kind of piece. You can put it somewhere. You can tell a story. You could be like this, like it means something. You know what I'm saying? Like this is channeling in energies right now. Yeah, no, but Bashar is amazing. He's another one of these channeling guys. Yeah, he Let's is. Rip. I love it. I love it. I, I feel like, you know, even more than stand up comedy, I could see myself doing channeling and getting trolled by all the all the people right. and like you expose frauds, but now you're a fraud. But I don't think it's fraudulent. I, I believe no. in that. No, no, you just can't take too much money, right? Sixty dollars a minute. Let's cool no, it, that's right? Money. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot of money. That's we got to show this Bashar channeling. He is honestly like he does. I, I like that he does it. Like okay, so so okay. Look, all right, look at this guy's channel. So even with with Matt Khan, he's saying channeling, but he's kind of joking and he's kind of saying like, yeah, I'm 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 channeling this teaching. It is kind of like if you do any creative work though, any creative work is channeling. Yes, like I believe this, that right yeah but then yep. bashar takes it to another level oh yeah and he's, he's just like like his look at his his picture profile it's amazing <laughs> and also, there's that. always a big giant crystal next to him on stage if they really? show the stage there there's like a giant generator quartz <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> look at him it's awesome this guy rips yeah i mean listen we all got to be careful though right like i mean yeah. this guy if someone could just Bing bang, he's a cult leader. I mean, this is the guy. Have you oh, ever yeah. seen Aaron Abke? No. Aaron, honestly, probably the, like the sexiest guru in the game. And really? I'm like, this guy is like just two text messages away from a sex cult. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The moment you think somebody could start a sex cult, they probably already have. <laughs> no, well, I think Aaron. I think Aaron Abke is very righteous. Like he does beautiful like, teachings. Okay. You're gonna love. You know what? You'll love actually. He just mm -hmm. put out puts out bangers. First of all, like look at how look at, he's gorgeous. Right? Oh, yeah, he's like a Hollywood he's, kind of. A he guy. is like a model or something, right? Yeah. But no, no, he put out a banger video. I gotta find it. Oh my god, it, it's yeah. it's about not like, karma. Doesn't, doesn't he play the bad guy on that show with <laughs> Zendaya? What's it called? He looks like that guy. <laughs> he he looks like a, like a guy on TV. I don't know that show, but yeah, yeah. Uh, on which one? Euphoria. Euphoria. He's such a euphoria actor. Like, yeah, <laughs> totally. He could have, honestly, half the time I see these people, they are like, you know, they try to be actors and stuff like that. I think he was a he was a trainer, but this is an yeah. incredible video he puts together. And then he's even doing like this artwork, and he's talking about this uh, these teachers who had who had uh, mystical experiences. Hmm. And I think that is what like I go for with the spiritual practices. It's like yeah. I go for people who are doing like I like the de I like the Wim Hof. I like the these basically these channelings. They are basically loving kindness teachings, right? You know, like and, yeah. and that's what he's talking about. This guy, this Italian mystic, who he like, like oh, this this animation is incredible. But like he like no, kind of became yeah. enlightened, and then he wanted to tell everyone about it. And then they were they they he was like burned at the stake and stuff like that. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. But it is our karma to tell the tell the culture. You know what I'm saying? I do. I yeah. felt like that after I saw this. I'll send this video to you. It's so tight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, that you're is not. animation. I know, right? Yeah. It's beautiful. And like, ah, oh, yeah, they killed him. They killed him because he was telling them about, okay, so tell me this then. Are you doing, uh, are you doing shrooms and stuff? No, not anymore. I did, I did back in my pre Nityananda years. Okay. And I, yeah, I always, I've always had a good trip. I think one of my best spiritual experiences ever was a DMT trip, like a couple of years oh, yeah. before. Found Nityananda. Yeah. A couple of couple of years after you left, eh? No, no, before I found him. Oh, before. I, I was 22 at the time, and I found him when I was 24. Interesting. So, so how many years in the game were you with him? Nine years. Woo! Nine yeah. years. 24 to 33. No, and that's why honestly, these cult rehab episodes are so good because yeah. really nine years in a cult. That is like winning an award or like writing in TV or something. It's like you have done the you've done a lot of karmas, I know. and then there's a lot to talk about, and then you can channel a teaching now. It's true. I feel that. I feel, and and you can also discern a good teaching that's like geared towards you improving your life or deepening your spiritual connection, 
or a bad teaching that's geared towards getting you hooked on the teacher. Exactly. And what? you know what my Babaji says, he calls them heart centered. And I didn't even know, I don't even, he, he did, he did it unconsciously, but he said, I was asking about some other guru and I was like, well, what do you think of this meditation class? Should I go whatever? And he's like, yes, she is good. And she is heart centered. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Because all and the loving kindness good. teachings are yeah. based on that unconditional loving kindness, even in Christianity. Yeah. Like you were talking about yeah. Christian mystics. Yeah. 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 Um, then, yo, what's that? Oh, nothing. Just, I could talk for hours about this, but no, you got to come back. Talking? Yeah. That would be cool. What's up? Are people? Yeah. Yeah. People are here. Cause we've gone. We were meant to go 40 minutes. It's been like two hours. It's With been two hours and 50 minutes. Cycle, I was going to say, when you showed that animation, there was yeah. a series I binged about the universe with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he had similar cosmos. animation. The Cosmos, that was it. Friends, Incredible. You have you seen the original Cosmos? I just have to say, hi, I'm sorry. I'm on a podcast, and it's going late. No, okay. Do you want to say hi? Can I show my mom? Hi. We have a yeah. Shout him out. This is a community. It's about Come on in. You're on cult rehab. Thank you for coming. <laughs> All I see is your jewelry on your wall, Sarah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. Oh, I'm we Asian. can see you. We can see you. You look great. Yeah, I guess they can't see you. It's on YouTube. <laughs> You're yeah. on the YouTube. Call Sorry. rehab. It's a it's a good program. Don't worry. It's a good, yeah, very I'll, nice program. I'll call you guys soon. Okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. Bye. Sick. Sorry. Well, that's good. You're back home. What did they do for nine years when you're gone? I guess they're like, well, it's a Hindu. He she went well, to a meditation mom, retreat. My mom also joined the cult. So she she would come to every December program when I was there. She got really into it. She the teachings okay. are but they do by the third day they're doing the abusive teachings exactly right. because you you the moment the moment you're in the door they'll figure out what they need to say to you specifically to cat like if you if you went to a nityananda center yeah they would pick up on you saying something about a heart centered teaching and they would tell you nityananda is a heart centered teacher they'll like they'll figure out it's like nlp they'll figure out what key word <laughs> they would say don't you know nityananda is Maha 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 Sarva Sri Para Ananda love a guru teacher? He knows well, a lot more than anyone. There's this, he was such a good con artist. There's a lady who was one of his sannyasis when I first joined. Her husband is a really good RB producer. And she started following Nitti because she was going to Michael Beckwith's. Oh, that's sweet. People are saying hi to my mom. I'll tell her that's later. Nice, 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 nice. So she, she was. Um, part of that congregation in LA, I forget what it's called, but the the head of that church is Michael Beckwith. You don't like those guys? Those they, they seem so nice. No, I don't dislike them. What I'm saying. Oh, okay, is cool, cool, cool. Yeah, was, Michael, Reverend Michael Beckwith. I love him. Agape. It's called good. Agape. She was a huge yeah Agape Agape. So she would go to Agape every week. Uh -oh. She goes in. Nityananda's there giving a talk at Agape. Uh oh. And she rolls her eyes and goes, oh, yeah, some young Hindu guy sitting on a golden throne. That's bullshit. And Michael Beckwith says to her, no, he's the real deal. A year later, she's his sannyasi. Michael Beckwith. Michael uh, Beckwith is soft. That's why he's soft. That, and you know, someone like Nick and I can just call him and be like, hey, please, Michael, please, you've let me. Like well, that was in 2007. Do you, have you seen the young pictures of Nityananda? He looked like a nice, sweet, heart-centered guy. He did look nice and sweet and heart centered, but yes. um, you know, honestly, it's not just Michael Beckwith, Reverend Michael Beckwith, love him, incredible teachings, yes. heart centered, mm -hmm. beautiful teachings. But this whole community is so ripe to be taken over by a cult leader because they are all soft and they have no that's, backbone. They're not going to talk what, shit about anyone. That's what yeah, Nintendo yeah. looked like in those days. He looks like right. he doesn't look he, like the leader of a sex cult who's going to make kids beat each other with sticks until they so bleed. It was back then that Michael Beckwith was like, this guy's the yeah. real deal. It was right. back. It was okay, back. Cool. I mean, I, I love Michael Beckwith, but then even on the secret documentary that they made, like half of them are in MLMs or like they yeah. just sell MLMs and they're like, why don't you be positive uh, or whatever? Exactly. Like join up this pyramid scheme. It's like they don't believe in anything and they're never going to call each other out because it's all positivity, positivity. So that's an issue. Yeah. 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 They're soft. Um, but yo, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for um, having me. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. You want to do a roomie card? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. I think you'll be very impressed with the Rumi. The Rumi Oracle is very, it's very yeah. beautiful. Yeah. All right. Look at this is the artwork. Oh, so, wow. uh, oh, beautiful. Sure. okay. Okay. So just say when. Okay. I'll close my now. 
Okay, what do we got here? Pretty. Anyone see the number? Damn. <laughs> I need to get the number. I don't see the number. And it's at number. the bottom? Do you, see, you don't see the number at the bottom? Oh my God. I think there's text covering it. Yeah. Sacred you no. You have to go oh, through the I whole book and find the picture. Oh, nice. Oh, no, no, I don't got it. Oh my God. Okay. Well, this really backfired. I thought I had the thing, but it's fine. I'll get it. One second. We are here. No, that's not it. Come on. Oh, Cosmic Heart. Got it. Cosmic Heart. Okay. Oh, speaking of heart centered. Cosmic, right? These guys, this guy is tight. Basically, like when you pick the card, that Rumi got Rumi's unconditional love guided that uh, oh. guided that call. So Cosmic Heart. I was dead. I became alive. I was tears. I became laughter. The power of love arrived and made me everlasting power. I have seen everything. I have no fear. I have the heart of a lion. I shine like Venus. Rumi. <laughs> so I good. Like it. Yeah, it's it's heart centered teachings. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's that's uh, our blessing for this week's uh, call rehab. Yeah. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank well, you. Do you it was want great, great chatting. Card. Should What's we that? do one? Too? A Lemurian Oracle? Let's do it. Yeah, of course. I'll tell you. Listen, I'm not going to say no to a blessing. I'm not going to sit here and say no to a blessing. Let's get a blessing in. Let me put some music on. This is great. And, and you've got to say when. I'll shuffle. Oh, one sec. And no, no. When? The throat chakra express your truth. Of, this is and this is what we need here on the channel. Wow, that's, that's great. So it's card number seven. And she wrote, this chakra is the origin of expression. It is the source of the life spark that inspires our aliveness and stokes the creative fires in others. This is the outer sharing of our inner being, the glowing song of our soul on the winds of our flight to understanding more of who we are. Connect to the crux of your personal potential and take it further than you could have imagined. As spirit fuses into the tangible, it actualizes as a platform for greater experiences and new facets are sculpted, seeded and shared as a fractal of light in the form of our own unique language. Be truthful with yourself about how you are really feeling. If you always act in integrity and follow your heart-centered truth, some unhealthy connections or aspects of your life will fall away and you'll be in complete alignment with your path. That's it. Woo! God is great. That's good. That's true. Right? That There's beautiful true. words. And look at her art. She does all her paintings. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah, that's great. All right. Yeah, these are great teachings. I don't know why people are such snobs about it. I used to be too, though. I know. I, I love oracle cards and stuff. They're yeah. so, they are good. And they are heart-based teachings. And they are, like, what the good part, you could say, of, like, what you're getting out of these calls and stuff. It's like, yeah. they call, you, you need it. You need some spiritual outlet, you know? That's what people are looking for. Not to get exploited by a psychopath, but for get a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. To get that good, to get that, like, to, to have that source in you, you know, like feeling yeah. that loving kindness of the universe. That, you reminder, know? that reminder, it's already there within you. Just tap into it and that's all. This you is great. Guy on a throne to bless you to have what all what you already have. It's like... If there was a quote, I forget who said it, but whoever tells you that they can help you awaken your spiritual consciousness is like somebody robbing your bank account and then telling you that they'll give you $5 if you yes. ask. Yes. Wow. That's so, that's powerful. It's true. It's true. You get it yourself and it's its own reward getting it. It's so fun. You already have it. You just have to remember yeah. it. I got to send you so many meditations. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm listening to some banger meditations right now. Loving yeah. kindness. It's great. Um, thanks everyone for listening. This has been an incredible episode. Honestly, one of our best. So yeah. good. I got to get so many clips out of it. You got to come back in a few weeks and we got to talk about these animated shows. We got to talk about the animated yeah. shows. So this is going to we'll be a reaction great. video like you had suggested. Yes, I think yes, yes. Cool. I think that's going to be so much fun. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Okay. All right. Good night. Bye. And uh, everyone out there, make sure you go out tonight, have a party, or ha hang out with people. You know what I'm saying? Let that Shiva and Shakti dance in you. And you know what I mean? Instead of being, you know, like, go out, be social, have a have a good time in this life, you know? Um, thanks for watching. You are loved. And tomorrow we have, tomorrow we have another episode. We have an XJW. His name is Ed. XJW Ed. It's going to be a great episode, too. He has some banger stories. 
get some great stuff too. And then next week we have Natalie Grant coming back, author of Call Girls. And uh, yeah, we'll probably get into more uh, reaction videos and stuff like that. But uh, thanks again, Sarah. You're you're loved. And uh, that's our show. <laughs>